And steaming on to the Most High Yah by way of Yahushua Hamashiach, John 539. Mm -hmm. They search the scriptures for enemy, think you have eternal life, and then they will testify me. And you will not come to me that you might have life. I receive not honor from men, but I know you that you have not the love of Elohim in you. I come in my Father's name, and you receive me not. If another should come in his own name, him you will receive. But how can you believe which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that comes from Elohim only? Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuses you, even Moses, in whom you trust. For you have believed Moses, you will have believed in me, for he wrote to me. But if you believe not his writings, how can you believe these words? Very well then. Mark chapter 1 and verse 1. It says, In the beginning was the Besor of Yehusha Mashiach, the son of Elohim, as it is written in the prophets, Behold, I send my message before my face. Which I prepared it said it was the what? The messenger before no, thy faith. The first thing it said, it was the what? He said it is written in the prophet. Oh, in the beginning was the Basar of good news of Yahushua Mashiach. So we're talking about these good tidings. The, the Basar, the good tidings. Say it was the beginning. Notice the reason why we looked at that. Where did we read last night about the beginning of those good tidings that correlates to exactly what is being spoken of right here? Because we read it last night. Where? That's very broad. No. Isaiah chapter 40 and verse uh, 3. Make it verse 1, actually. It says, Comfort ye, comfort ye my people, says you, you all are in. Pause. Does anybody remember what that word was for comfort in this particular verse? <laughs> Calm, indeed. It means to repent. Now let's hold this and let's go to uh, Matthew chapter 4, right? I want to say about verse 14. It says, That it might be fulfilled which is spoken by his eyes, the prophet saying, And the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan. Galilee of the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. The people which sat in darkness saw great light, and to them which sat in the region of the shadow of death, light has sprung up. Say, so those who sat in darkness seen a great light. What's the next thing it says? It says, from that time, Yusha began to preach, saying, Repent, for the king of Shamahim is at hand. Does anybody remember those characters that was putting the calm? Because he's telling them to speak comfort, so to comfort them, he's telling them that you need to repent. Yeah, you can put it on there. The word is Nakam. It has three characters. It means to repent. The well, one of the means. Uh huh. What would be the second character after noon? Uh huh. And what would be the last one? The mem, indeed. So when we look at that, what is what are we going to get from this? Because he told them, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So Nakan, because he told them to speak comfortably to them, to tell them to repent. So if we look at noon, what would we use? Clearly we would use life. And of course, cotton, we're going to use separation. Mm -hmm. So it means that this ruach or this water will separate you to life. This is what repentance will do. Now, why is this important for him to tell you that? In the book of Psalms, he told you that if there was, if, that, if he counted all sin, who would stand? But forgiveness is with you that people might fear you. You understand? And see, that takes us back to, let's go ahead and get that Exodus 34. 
and verse 5, it's going to take us right back right this, to here. This is the first element, again, if we talk about good tidings. It is a good thing to tell a person to repent. After we read this, we will read James chapter 5 and verse 17. Exodus 34 and verse 4. See, the first thing a nigga will come at you right now and say you got to return as a repentant Israelite. That is the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my entire life. You know what I'm saying? Because this man has never told you to return as a repentant Israelite. He never put Israelite at the end of the sentence. See, we didn't read that in Ezekiel 18 last night. That man say, cast away all your transgressions by whereby you have transgressed, so iniquity will not be your ruin. He said, repent. That was the thing he said in Ezekiel 18 was for you to repent. Exodus 34 and 4. It says, and he hewed two tables of stone like unto the first, and Moses rose up early in the morning and went up unto Mount Sinai, as Yahuwah had commanded him, and took in his hand the two tables of stone. Mm. And Yahuwah descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of Yahuwah. And Yahuwah passed before him and proclaimed, Yahuwah, Yahuwah, Allahim, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth. Mm -hmm. Giving mercy unto thousands and forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin. Mm -hmm. And that will, by any means, no means clear the guilty. Mm -hmm. Visiting the iniquity of fathers upon the children and upon the children's children to the third and fourth. You know how he said he, he does what? He forgives sin and transgression. But you would have to, let's get that Ezekiel 18 and 39. So there will be a different word for repent in Ezekiel 18. Notice that when we looked at it, Matthew, before he went, instead that the first thing he said was repent, the kingdom of Shamahim is at hand. They said the people that dwelt in darkness seen a great light. He was quoting the prophet Isaiah. I guess we will look at where he quoted that from for those of you who are not aware of what he quoted. Very well then. Ezekiel uh, 18 and 30. It says, Therefore I will judge you, O house of Yasharal, everyone according to his ways, said Jehu Elohim, repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions so iniquity will not be your Pause. Reason. That word for pen is shub. It's S-H-U-W-B. It's got three characters. You can put it on there for them to see. That literally means to return or to turn back. What characters will we use for this? It's what, three, right? Yeah. What's the first character we will use? Indeed. What would be the next one? Indeed. And what would be the last one? Indeed. So, what will we take from this? If you're looking at repenting, well, with Sean, will we use consume? Probably not. Probably not. Probably with Sean on this one here, you will probably use a pair. Or two. You wouldn't want to use consume here based on the other characters that are contained in it. And then the fact that you're coming back. Because you're not going to destroy the sacrifice or the peg that come after that. Ooh. No, I think destroy the enemy. I was a person You know what I'm saying? Just because the ooh behind that. That's so, you know what I'm talking about? Now you could, but that would be a little different. And that'll take me, but no, it could still take us in the same direction. So with that bot, what we, we sit back and get that on that one there, the house or in the sun. Or in the sun. Just be being that because you paired yourself with the sacrifice, now you're in the sun. Or you joined yourself to that sacrifice, that puts you in the sun, which is the purpose of your repentance. Now we could also take that destroying the uh, house by the sacrifice would mean you have to destroy your mortal body. But because we did in the, the direction that we didn't start this in Wednesday, we're really more focused on being in the sun. So when you actually repent, you will actually be coming yourself to be in Yahusha. That's the whole purpose. <laughs> then you can take part of some of the things that we're going to look at. I mentioned something else. I don't remember what I said. Uh, John, Matthew, Matthew, no. After the, after the exodus, you said something. You talking about Yeah, I don't forgot. Let's go to Isaiah 61 and 1. I ain't doing a lot. Yeah. Are you like, oh, 
those who walk in darkness in the great light, you're going to show where. Yeah, I get that in a minute. I don't forgot. We still got Isaiah 40 on deck, though. We're in Isaiah 61 and 1. It said, In the roar of Yahuwah, Elohim is upon me because Yahuwah have anointed me to preach the good tidings unto the meek. Stop right there. What would be the word for anointed here? I wager everyone here should know that. Without even having to look. Y'all don't know what word would be used for anointed here? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Indeed. Well, we got three characters for. Uh, That's Mashiach. Yeah, Mashiach. I mean, anointed one is Mashiach. Anointed is the fruit word Mashiach. That's true. See the same difference? Not the same. Because you're going to break down the word. Yeah. And then you got the same character. Yeah, I'm just short one. It's uh, we got three characters for it. M S M A S H A C H. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. And what would be the last one? In the chat. We have the mem, the shine, and the chat. So, what will we ascertain from this? I would agree. Yeah, but again on that one now, we probably use pair again. The only the difference because it said Yahuwah have anointed me. So someone has placed this oil or smeared this liquid upon you or placed that water on you. The separation. You know what I'm saying? So when you're looking at it again, it's the Ruach which separated him to life. Because this is what he's coming to do. Because he's been anointed to do this particular task. You know what I'm saying? Only him. One man. Because it said, Yahuwah have a... Let's look at <coughs> excuse me, Luke chapter 4, verse 14, where Yahushua himself said this verse is talking about. Him. Luke chapter 4 and verse 14. Make it verse 12. Luke 4 and 12. It says, and Yahushua answered and said unto him, It is said, Thou shalt not tempt Yahuwah thy Elohim. And when the adversary had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a, week, for a season. And Yahushua returned in the power of the Ruach unto Galilee and Paul, went out. That's the reason, one, one of the reasons why I came right there. He said he returned into Galilee in the power of what? The Ruach. Now, he had just been tempted by the adversary. Now, he said that it says in Isaiah 61, Yahuwah has sent him to speak the Basar. Or to tell these people how to be in him to be joined to Yahuwah. The whole objective of the whole gospel is to get you joined with your God. That's the whole purpose of it. That's why it's good news. That's why I'm telling you, it's not good news for me to tell you an Israelite. It's not. That's fleeting. That's but for a moment. You get excited. Because guess what? All your forefathers knew they were Israelites too. And all of them died in the wilderness. Every last one of them. They all knew it too. This is why Paul steady went in where people be so focused on that they think he's talking about circumcision when he was really talking about y'all are glorying in your flesh and you have nothing to glory of. You know what I'm saying? You have nothing to glory of. What, 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 what amount of pride can you have that you had a covenant and you broke it? You know what I'm saying? You ain't got no business boasting in that. That's idiotic. Do you know what I'm talking about? So then you turn around and then you telling me the law. We went in a little just more specifically last night. Every time that law was read, the people they wept. Every time. You don't see nobody reading that law and they jumped up and down and did back screens and hand claps. Do you know what I'm saying? These people wept. Because they know, oh boy, we dying. But did you hear what he just said? Come on, man. You got Daniel talking about, boy, you done pulled everything out of us that was written in the curse of the law by the oath of your servant Moses. Everything you said you were going to do to us, boy, you did it. Now we sit here with confusion of faces. He say our princes, our judges, our rulers, our priests, everybody done transgressed it. Because when you open that law up, you're going to see that. Oh, this is what's going to happen now? But what do niggas do with it now when they read it? We the people. They get excited. You shouldn't be happy about that. Your, your heart should mourn. I think, yeah, that's how I feel. I said, boy, I'm going to hell when I read this. I said, boy, if he put us on these boats and sent us over here to be under the most animalistic, barbaric conditions that have ever been conceived out of a human mind, what is he going to do to me if I continue to sin? That's the first thing that went through my brain, straight up and down. You know what I'm saying? 
I know what these people done did to us since we've been over here. I can't even speak of what they done did to our people nowhere else because I don't live there. But I know what they did to us over here. And if they can conceive that in their mind and this was the punishment of y'all, I'm not going to play with this, man. How many brews you see post up with place called talking about Deuteronomy 28 trying to get you to feel pride and damnation? Condemnation. Because showing somebody Deuteronomy 28 is literally showing them condemnation. And you telling me that's good news to tell me that I'm condemned for disobedience. No, that's not good news, cuz. I don't want to hear that. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to hear that. Why you think people turn away and they don't accept it? They don't want to hear that. That's not winning no souls, man. And that's not wisdom. Continue on, sir. It says, and he went out, it said, he went in the power of the rock unto Galilee, and there went out a fame of him throughout all the region round about. And he taught in the synagogues, and being esteemed of all. And he came unto Nazareth, where he had been brought up, as it was his custom. As he went into the synagogue on the Shabbat, and stood up for to read. Uh -huh. And there was delivered unto him a book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Ruach of Yahuwah is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the Besor to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight unto the blind, and to set at liberty them that are bruised, mm. to preach the acceptable year of Yahuwah. Continue. And he closed the book and gave it again unto the minister and sat down. And what he told? And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, This day is the scripture fulfilled in your ears. This day of what? The scripture is fulfilled in your ears. He told him this script is complete right now in your ears from you. So that you know what that means, right? So that means we have to actually go through this entire verse and see where he completed that. Because he just looked at people in their faith and told them, this verse has been fulfilled right here today. You know, there's some bold words that walk in a room full of people who've been waiting on the individual who this is prophesied of. And this man walked up in front of him and read it and told him, that's me, cuz. Go ahead. It said, and all bear witness and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, is this not Joseph's son? And he said unto them, ye will surely say unto me, this proverb, physician, heal thyself. Whosoever we have heard done in Capernaum, do also hear. You heard it say, well, they say, physician, heal thyself. When did they tell him that? When he was on the state. They told him, you saved others, save yourself. Because you coming to tell me, because in this particular passage, he just came, people, and told them that he was coming to save them. Come back to Isaiah 61. You can write Basar on there to draw it out so they can see it with their eyes, and then we could throw it on there. Because he said he anointed him to preach good tidings. So when we look at that, he anointed this man to be it for you to be in the sun, for you to be joined to the highest. Period. This way he was, no other man has ever been chosen to get you in your hood. Nobody. Our example of that is when we read about Joseph. Couldn't nobody get to Pharaoh but by who? They had to go through Joseph to get to Pharaoh. He was second in command. Nobody could get to Yahuwah but by who? Moses. Do you know what I'm saying? You had to go holler. You had to be down with Moses to get to Yahweh. If you wasn't down with Moses, you wasn't getting to him. Yahushua had the, spirit, the same spirit Moses had on him, and he still had to go to Moses. You know what I'm saying? To get to the highest, you had to go to the person who the highest is set there to do this. Because in, in reality, in truth, the Ruach anointed Moses to go preach good tidings. The very same things that this, this passage in Isaiah is talking about, he sought Moses to do the same thing. Which is another instance of he's a prophet like under Moses. If individuals could pay attention and see it. And we're going to do the parallel from both of them. We got a lot to do and short period of time to do it. So that's the bazaar up there for y'all to see for your own eyes. We already talked about it on Wednesday. Very well. Now he says he, he bring good tidings unto the meek and he have sent him up to bind the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. So the next word that we will look at is he has sent. That word is shalak. You spell it S-H-A. L-A-C-H. S, well I missed the L. S-H-A-L-A-C-H. It means to send away, 
to extend, to direct, to send off, to shoot forth. All that good old stuff. Three characters, and what characters will we use for it? Indeed. And what would be the next one? Absolutely. So when we look at that Sean, what will we use there? Ironically, again, we would use pair or two because you're not consuming a teaching here. You're joining yourself to a teaching. So he that is sent is joining themselves to a teaching that separates. So we already know that Yahusha is coming forth to send a teaching that separates. Let's see how that Yahusha is bringing forth a teaching that separates. Because we read it last night in Acts that you are sanctified by what? The faith that is in him. This is what separates you. See, that's what the law won't do. The law will not separate you. It'll separate you in the eyesight of man, but it doesn't separate you in the eyesight of Allahim. That's the difference. Not saying that the law doesn't separate because we know full well it does that. That's common sense. You walk in the law, you're definitely going to be separate. You're definitely going to be sanctified, consecrated, Kadesh, or whatever you want to use. You know what I'm talking about? But when we remember what did Mashiach say, he said sanctify them by what? He said, and I sanctified myself by what? The truth. So if they sanctify themselves, what are the first people going to scream? The law is the truth. But we know that truth is not talking about truth as an absolute fact. We know that's talking about the firmness, the soundness, or the faithfulness. So he set himself apart by faith. This is what he told you in John 17. So that you would do what? Set yourself apart by faith. Then because you do that, you live by your faith, which means you keep the law and have back a two and four still come back into play. The just live by their faith because you can't be just without faith. See, dudes thinking they just with the law and no faith, and it's going to leave you incomplete. It's going to leave you incomplete, and that's not good news. Because, see, if I bring you the news that you can be sanctified by faith, and then you find out in the midst of you hearing that good news that this is why you need to be sanctified by faith because this over here condemns you. But through this faith, you can be delivered so that therefore this will no longer condemn you because you will walk in it at that point. See, that's the mistake our people make. You bring the law first. So the people in their hearts are already condemned. And I can tell you right now, most of y'all ain't never wanted to hear nothing from somebody who was telling you you were wrong off the top. And then try to bring you something in to get you to do the opposite of what you were doing was wrong. Human nature is to automatically shut your ears and your heart off to that conversation. You know what I'm saying? That's why the dudes who killed Mashiach, who hearts were hardened, and they come and tell them. That's why they didn't want to hear Because of, and I'm talking about human nature. It's you, you'll shut down. No, nah, I don't want to hear that. You telling me I, I like it. Uh, and, and, and then we pick the most asinine things to come to people with. Sabbath, pork, and shrimp. Of all the things contained in the law that you shouldn't do, that's the first thing you're going to come at a nigga with? You know it's a sin to eat that ham, brother. You out here on the Sabbath enjoying yourself, going to the mall, swimming in the pool. You know what I'm saying? Straight up and down, though. That's the, they don't talk about nothing else. You ain't hear that's the first thing they come with. Unclean meats on the Sabbath. How about you tell these niggas stop lying? You know what I'm saying? I think, I, I'm going to be honest with you. It ain't hard to, to keep the Sabbath. I think that's an easy thing to do. For some people, it's hard to stop lying. Nigga, whole life a lie. You know what I'm talking about? Whole life a lie. <laughs> Y'all know people who whole life a lie. <laughs> Everything about they I ain't talking about they tell lies. They whole life is a lie. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It is probably, it is probably easy to keep one day. Did the shoot and turn around and stop telling lies? You lie every day. Every day? <laughs> you got niggas who log on social media for the purpose of lying. <laughs> for the purpose of lying. You don't live like that. Or we balling. You sleep on the floor. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like for real though. People get on, you, you know the crazy part in the world is, you get locked up, nigga tell you he balling, you know they got a little photo album, right, you know you people send you pictures, you put your little pictures in the photo album, nigga done got another nigga cars in his photo album, talking about they his, and a nigga walk up, put out my homeboy car, or it's the nigga car who it, it actually belongs to, I've seen this happen, you know what I'm saying, you think it, why won't you tell people stop being malicious, 
and lustful and spiteful. Oh, the, the only only work of the flesh anybody want to talk about is homosexuals. They don't want to tell nobody to stop fornicating, whore mongering, and committing adultery. They sure want to talk about a punk, though. Well, ain't none of these people over here punks. You don't talk about it unless you can, your punk meter went off and you think called a punk. <laughs> Every every straight nigga got a punk. Well, I mean, shoot, I'm gonna tell you though, women catch it quicker than men though. You know what I'm saying? And I haven't seen that. But for the most part, shoot, you should be be able to point out a punk. You feel like, well, that nigga, that's sweet, boy. All these, all these, well, they they might go off and just might really like niggas. It be it be it be females that think they nigga straight. They got a punk. They be knowing that nigga gay. They just thinking if they keep giving him some booty, they'll turn him back. They be knowing that nigga gay. Nah, but even look at them. I mean, I but see, now, see, that's a, but, see, but see, the down low thing is, but y'all done been around nigga who want to down low, and you ain't think they were punks. What, a nigga? What? You done know the nigga on the down low, you ain't even know it. Boy, I done been around nigga like, boy, that nigga's gay. You know what I'm talking about? Like, it came out like that nigga was gay. It ain't been no nigga that I ain't think was gay, and it came out. They but see, I ain't talking about niggas you even thinking gay. I'm talking about a well, nigga. We talking about gay dog. That's all I was. I'm just saying, boy. I done been the time I've been off. And the nigga was like, "Where you going, dog?" I seen that coming. Yeah, yeah, I seen that coming. Boy, I done been around some niggas like, boy. You around here piping punks down late night, boy? Boy, I ain't know you were living like that. I feel like that's one of the most surprising things ever, especially if you were really down with it. But I've been told y'all about that when that punk came on Atlanta Beach and put them niggas on blast and all them niggas like this here. I said, oh man, ain't none of y'all been to jail. <laughs> ain't none of y'all been to jail. So where you learned that from? You ain't know he was this. Boy, them niggas weren't showing no signs of no homosexuality. Them boys on the block every day. You know what I'm talking about? Them niggas put, them niggas put it out there, snorting that cane late night. Yeah. The, the dope feet. You know what I'm saying? The crack holes ain't out. Your holes ain't ass on the phone. And here come little sissy poops down. Yeah, he should have went to sleep. But that cocaine had him like this here. You heard what that nigga said about Richard Pryor? Get Richard Pryor on that cocaine, he hit anything. I guess how they, that's how they were feeling. How they were feeling. Right, that boy come say I top you off. Boy, look here, right? Boy, it was a nigga I knew from. The, I was at the P farm. That's off Lim Turner. It's a nigga I knew from the street. Nigga, we get locked up, and this nigga is a known butt chaser. I say, boy, what? When the how? When? Nigga, I know you personally. <laughs> so this what you do when you get locked up. This why you keep coming here, huh? <laughs> He's straight up, cause he been locked up quite a few times, and I'm like, what? They say, boy, that nigga get up under the bunk, boy. What? Under the bunk? I said, boy, I ain't your friend no more, cause I don't know you. Don't talk to me. I don't want no cigarettes, no nothing. <laughs> nah, boy. Hey, this here, boy. This, but I'm telling you, boy. It's a lot of street niggas out here, boy, because they not coming out with no feminine tendencies because they ain't getting ran up in. See, see, my personal opinion is if a man get penetrated, that femininity coming out. Yeah. Can't nobody break your freshness seal and that junk don't come yeah. out. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Cause girls like that regular. They ain't regular niggas. And you wouldn't know. So if that's the type of nigga it is, you Yeah, they know. running up in nigga, you ain't gonna know. You wouldn't know. Because I'm saying the nigga not really gonna change. Yeah. Not really gonna change up that much. I'm telling you, guess what? You would have seen a booty warrior on the street. If you would have seen a booty warrior on the street, you would have not thought that nigga yeah. was gay. Yeah. How do you tell when you meet somebody? No, 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 no. That was like a booty warrior. The booty warrior. Sizing it up. See, we ain't even talking about But on the street, he ain't gonna size nobody up. Like he ain't gonna do that. That's the environment he in. Because he say he like it, he want you. Because of the environment. But I'm telling you right this here, right? A nigga who do that in prison. But I'm saying, but a nigga who do that in prison, they don't come home on the street and act like that. Because that's not acceptable. A nigga gonna shoot you. Yeah. You, can't you, can't you can't go get away with that like you're not gonna get away with that in out here. Yeah. Like nigga like that in yeah. We're gonna tell you right in prison a nigga just gonna try you if he feel like he can whoop you on the street A nigga not gonna try you like that because it's gonna be consequences and repercussions They gonna try to finesse you out your booty. They gonna see if you gonna go ahead They gonna do a little sissy stuff that you ain't even realize this sissy stuff and see if you go for it Like I was locked up young nigga never been locked up before Old nigga call him up to his room talking about young blood help put this lotion on my bike. I said, boy, you went for that? <laughs> <laughs> Come up right up there lotion in that nigga bike. <laughs> I said, boy, that nigga gonna get your booty, boy. <laughs> we in the county, though. 
though. We in the county though. That's a fact though. What? Nigga ain't gonna try you in the street like that. Niggas not gonna try you like that on the street. Jail type. Them jail stuff. My bad. Look here, boy. Let's see that's different. That's different. That's an innocent child. They don't know. Bro, these niggas down there 12, 13. No, that's different. You don't got being all that young. That's different, bro. That's different. That's different because that's child molestation. No, it's different. I'm telling. I'm telling you this. I understand your premise, but if you ain't never been locked up, you have no idea what they talking about when you talking about the stuff that them niggas do to bait a nigga versus them coming on the street and doing it because they can't get away with that on the street. Okay, you play with it if you want to. You go on the chain game. Them niggas play a lot of booty games that you ain't gonna play on the street. Straight up and down. Nigga ain't gonna come on the street and shoot you no honey bun, my nigga. You know what I'm talking about? Them niggas around here, niggas, nigga, nigga the chain gang, a peep your people ain't sending you no money. Oh, young blood. You hungry? I got some soups in my locker. You need a honey bun? But see, but you got some, but at the same token though, you got real niggas in the chain gang that will shoot you that and don't want nothing. Other than, oh, you from Jacksonville, cuz? You do well, go on ahead and get your son, my nigga. You good, cuz? And then he ain't playing them type of games. And they know you ain't get no money. No, but see, the, see, you ain't gonna see that on the real type of time. You ain't gonna know a nigga gonna try you with some punk stuff till the nigga try you. Then you gonna have to, then you yeah, that, that's what you then you gonna have one. You ain't got but one or two choices. Knock up or buck up. What you gonna do? Know what you gonna do? The, the biggest thing they don't do it too much no more. You come to your room and a nigga got a vinyl on your pillow. You be like this here, boy. I done seen nigga walk in there. Which one of you who nigga put that on my bed? <laughs> nigga don't try me like that. That's, that's like roses on the street. What? Nigga leave a honey bun on your bunk? And nigga and, and, and a rookie, see they do this to new people. They put it on your bunk. You come in there. You eat it. So the nigga come back through like, oh, where my honey bun at? Oh, I ate it. Let me get my honey bun back. Oh, I'll go buy you another one. No, I want my honey bun. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Okay. Nigga say, bro, I'll buy you two more. I want my honey bun. Now he trying to touch your buns. And that's how that happens. Because I can say in the state of Florida, niggas don't get raped. So, for the most part, these niggas are willing participants. All right, what are we talking about? What are <laughs> oh, you can say all you want to. All right. Shoot. But guess what? I'm telling you right now. You don't. Every person in here don't smoke the blunt with a pump. Ain't no problem. Ain't no problem. Everybody in here, and you ain't know you was smoking with a pump. That nigga just got finished puffing a Peter, and you puffing a blunt with it. Okay, play with it. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you, boy. It's a, I know niggas right now, boy, you'll see them niggas, you'll never believe them niggas were homosexual. Same way I know people who smoke crack, and you wouldn't think them people smoke crack. Nah, it's the same. Because people have an image in their mind of what a punk or a crackhead gonna look like. And sometimes they don't look like that. It's a punk, it's a punk you fit, though. But it's a nigga though. That nigga, yeah, it's a punk at the window's on barrel. That nigga like to come over there and dap you up. Hey, bro. All right, bro. That's what I'm talking about. Just like Straight, that. Bro. Your radar ain't broke. <laughs> Some niggas is obvious, boy. Some niggas is obvious. Straight up. All these boys around here are poisoning the vagina population with that junk they've been doing up that road, boy. And on these streets. Who that was that was married to a punk all them years that was famous? She ain't know that nigga was gay. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. The lady that wrote Waiting to Exhale. Or the author, yeah. I don't know, that nigga I don't know how she ain't know he was gay, though. That was obvious. She was trying to get the drink on. <laughs> Had to be, because that was obvious he was gay. <laughs> that nigga was obvious. Some of them, you like, baby, how you missed that? It's the same token you can't always spot no lesbian. I can tell you, I can tell you that right now. I don't know nothing about that. He's talking about nothing about that. Oh, you did. Oh, no, no. We talking about the bulldog. It's hard to spot a lesbian. Yeah, I'm saying. I don't know nothing about that. You ain't going to know that. Yeah, you ain't going to know that. You ain't going to know her thoughts. Unless you talk like a guy. No, that's them studs. She just look like it. Yeah. 
Come on, man. Just say, what we going to come up with Shalot with? No, I didn't pick out that point, though. Nino pointed out. What's other works of the flesh they talk about? Don't nobody talk about the backbiting. Don't nobody talk about covenant breaking. Don't nobody talk about men being lovers of themselves. Niggas don't talk about greed. Niggas don't talk about lust. They don't talk about none of that. Just don't eat no shrimp, bro. You don't keep the Sabbath. So you need to come back to these laws. Niggas say there's 613 laws in the book, and they only talk about two of them. They still to, do they you know what I'm saying? Indeed, do their own with. You don't never hear them talking about. You know the law say look out for the poor cub. The law say don't have respect to person. The law say circumcise your heart. Why they don't talk about none of that? Oh yeah, I forgot the other one. Feast days. They're quick to tell you about the feast day. Y'all around here keeping Easter. You need to keep Passover with your Christmas pagan days. Man, screw that junk. Man, let them people ho 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 be merry merry merry. They ain't bothering me. You know what I'm talking about? Them people is not bothering me. When I say not bothering me, they ain't bother. I get so offended when people say Merry Christmas to me. Nigga, you've been in the word 10 years, cause you ain't got over that yet. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? They gonna tell you Merry Christmas, nigga. You already know this. That's it. You'd be surprised how many people actually, oh, we'll get one. Yeah, that don't. That, no, that like actually respect that like, all of a sudden celebrate this. Like, oh, all right, cool. Yeah, because I had to tell me, you know why people say Merry Christmas? Habit. Because in their mind, they assume everybody does it. So if you say, hey, I don't celebrate Christmas, they're not going to be like, you don't celebrate Christmas? What kind of person are you? I don't really know. Oh, you're going to always have it. It's always going to be something. Mm -hmm. I'm saying, the shocking number of people who just like, oh, cool. And, then keep, it and cool. keep it moving is much higher than people believe. Yeah, that's what I always do. <laughs> now, you definitely get hit with that a lot. Are you Muslim? Gonna get you're going to get hit. Like this here, oh, you don't celebrate your life or what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you then, nigga? Do you know what I'm talking about? When was you made free on that day? I'll wait for it. I'm free off my job, nigga. Indeed. <laughs> but you know, for most black people, though, that's all they really care about is, is a day to get with their people and no, eat. That's why I said that. Most of them don't even really care nothing about what they're really about. You got an average nigga like that, nigga, say, I'm off. But you know the worst part? You know the worst thing before we proceed? I used to hate seeing on the 4th of July street niggas with United States flag outfits on. Why I used to hate that right now? Yeah, I ain't talking about regular people. I'm talking about street niggas. Ha ha! Yeah, appreciate Clearly they gonna appreciate what Mr. Charlie gonna drop them off at for them drugs they got. Make them make great again. Right. <laughs> I know y'all been seeing that. Say Donald Trump wanna institute the death penalty for niggas selling dope. Heroin specifically. But no, actually, he getting the idea from overseas. Overseas in certain countries, yeah, bro, you're going to get the death penalty for that. Yeah, overseas. Opioids, man. They say y'all on the white people on that heroin, they don't like it. See, they ain't care about putting nobody on no death penalty when you were smoking crack. Oh, man, little Bobby and Jenny on heroin. We got to do something. See, it was a lock them up thing when Tyrone and LaQuisha was on crack. Bobby and Jenny on heroin. We need more uh, treatment. It's a disease ravaging the country. But we need help. We need services. Rotten bathroom. Same way they put that story out there with that little white boy that got killed blowing them bombs up. They painted cuz who they shot 20 times in Sacramento as the worst human being in the world. They made that little white boy look like he was just uh, leave it to Beaver. Nigga, this cracker dropping bombs off, my nigga. If that's not a terrorist, I don't know what is. I don't think that white boy made them, but they said them bombs was intricate. Where this little white boy got them skills to make these bombs at? YouTube. Ain't that much YouTube in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't that much, from what they described them bombs, they said them bombs were military grade. Ain't that much YouTube in the world. Yeah, I don't believe none of that. I don't be, man, when, when, when somebody say somebody did something and the person magically come up dead when they catch them, nine times out of ten, they ain't had nothing to do with that. Yeah, that's what they say. But boy, okay, they said Lee Harvey Oswald killed JFK and all you got to do is five minutes of research and you know that man did not kill that man. Yeah, he didn't blow up. Yeah, no, sure. I'm saying, that's the decoy. That's the decoy, they call it a pass. Blow him up, they Because I know that white boy make them bombs. No 24-year-old white boy said this crack ain't had a job in two years. They said this crack ain't had a job in two years. Where he got all the money I had to make the bombs from? No, it's not that difficult to make a bomb. From what they said of these bombs, that they were highly advanced. They were not regular pipe bombs. They wasn't no, I can make this with some WD-40 and some nails under the sink. <laughs> <laughs>
know, know but you know what I'm saying? They say buddy bombs were so intricate that he could drop them off and they wouldn't explode. You know what I'm saying? Whatever they got going on. I know this here. He time son. And I want to know where he got the money to make the bomb. He ain't had a job in two years. And he lived with other niggas. So how they didn't know he was making the bomb? Niggas stayed with two other people. <laughs> what Bobby back there doing? Making bombs? Come on, man. But look, look, let's look at this here, man. Let's look how this teaching pairs you to separate. Well, I told you to go ahead. I did have something. We went away from it. Give me, uh, yeah, give me John chapter 13, verse uh, 17. No, I don't like I said, we know about I just point out the fact that uh, and you look at the law, they only talk about feast days, Sabbath, and, and don't eat no swine. Oh, yeah, I can't forget this one here. This is their favorite if they run across a woman. You need to submit unto a man. It's not law for you to speak in the, in, in the church. Nigga, you on Facebook, cuz. I done seen dudes in a conversation on the street going to tell a woman it's not lawful for her to speak. Cause this is not an assembly. <laughs> Nigga, we on Justina Road, cuz. <laughs> for real though, man. Y'all know ain't lying. Go ahead. John 13. And 17. It says, if ye you know these things happy are ye if ye do them. I speak not of you all. I know whom I have chosen, but that the scripture may be fulfilled that he that eat bread with me have lifted up his heel against me. Uh huh. Now I tell you before I come that when it come to pass ye may believe that I am he. Verily, verily I say unto you, he that receiveth whosoever I send receiveth. Whoso what? Whosoever receiveth who I send receiveth. So remember, Yahuwah son Yahusha to bring up the, the to bring the teaching that separates, correct? Well, shoot, nobody gave me an answer. Well, let's sit back and let's look and see. Let's go to John 12 and 44. Because he said, whosoever received whomsoever I send, receive me. That's what he said, right? He that received me, receiveth him. that sent me. Well, we ain't got, but we'll get John 12 and 44 anyway. Because this is time back to Isaiah 61. We have to establish you. Who is something this man? Then when we establish you, who is something this man? And we can establish that he is bringing a teaching that will, well, he's pairing you to a teaching that will separate you. The teaching of the, the gospel of Yahusha or the Basar, the good tidings of Yahusha, will separate you. Continue, sir. John 12 and 44. Yahusha cried and said, He that believeth on me, believeth not on me, but he but on him that sent me. Mm -hmm. And he that seeth me, seeth him that sent me. I am come a light unto the world that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. And if any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not. For I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. Mm -hmm. He that rejected Pause. Me. You see what he said? If he didn't come to judge the world, what word would we use? Will we use Mishpat or Shafat? Which one will we use? We're going to use Shafat for that one there because he did not come to vindicate or punish or destroy you. He didn't come to do that. Go ahead. It say, he that rejected me and receiveth not my words hath one that judgeth him, and the word that I have spoken the same shall judge him in the last day. Mm -hmm. For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which hath sent me, he hath given me a commandment, what I should say and what I should speak. And I know that his commandment is life everlasting. Whatsoever I speak thereof, therefore, even as the Father said unto me, so I speak. Come back to Matthew 17 and verse 1. Matthew 17 and 1. We'll take one more witness. It said, and after six days, Jehuzah taketh Peter and James and John his brother and bringeth them to a high mountain apart and was transfigured before them in his face. He brought them where? Time. Where he, he brought, brought them? them to a high mountain apart. Mm -hmm. And was transfigured before them mm -hmm. and his face did shine as the sun and his raiment was white as the light. Pause, 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 pause. No, that's not what I mean. I'm thinking about something else. Go ahead. And behold, there appeared unto him Moses and Elijah talking with him. And then answered Peter and said unto Yahushua, Master, is it good for us to be here? If thou wilt, let us 
making these three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Mm -hmm. While he had spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud was said, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Do what? Hear ye him. Do what? Hear ye him. So that's who he son. This is who he son. Now he just stated that he, he sent people too. And the teaching that he's sending them with will cause you to be paired to, to this teaching to cause you to be separated. Or paired to the teacher to be separated. So let's look at uh, what? Matthew 28. Pick it at verse 15. <coughs> it says, so they took the money and did as they were taught. And this saying is commonly reported among the Yahoo demons to this day. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee into a mountain where Yahushua had appointed them. They went where? To a mountain where Yahushua had appointed them. I just reason them. I want y'all to remember that mountain. Go ahead. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Yahushua came and spake unto them, saying, All the power was given unto me, and in Shamahim and in the rock. Go ye therefore and teach all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Ruach HaKadosh. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. So he sent them, right? Now come and look at Luke 16 and 14. I mean Mark 16 and 14. And let's see what we see there. And then after that, John chapter 21. It says, After he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat and abraded them with their unbelief and the hardness of heart, because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. Mm -hmm. And he said unto them, Go ye unto all the world and preach the besor unto every creature. Go tell these good tidings to every creature. We looked at three things with good tidings last night. What it was it? What was it? In Isaiah 52, he said to put that he would publish three things. What were those three things that would be published? I got all day. What are the three things that he said he would publish? No, he didn't say he published faith. I'm talking about specifically what's contained in the text. Publishing is actual faith, because when it say published, it say Shema. He said he published three things. Not in Isaiah 52. That ain't what we looked at last night. He said he had published three things. It was said to say he had published two things and declared a third, which is all the same as far as I'm concerned. And it's three things. We looked at three dis distinct things last night. Three distinct things. Salvation. Say what? Salvation. He said he'll publish salvation. Not in Isaiah 52. He said he'll publish shalom. There's one more. The last thing that he said that he told that to tell them to declare was that to Zion that your Elohim reigns. The door. So, because do you know why y'all should have remembered publishing Shalom? What did we look at last night when he talked about he, that he would publish Shalom? We're very specific and took our time to look at it. You know what I'm saying? Because you should know it. If you don't know it, that's your fault. When he said publish alone, we went to look at something in Nahum chapter 1. What did we look at in Nahum chapter 1? Because he told you he would publish good tidings in Nahum. Then he told you that the, somebody would be cut off. Who was that person who would cut off? Bilal himself. Bilal was cut off. Who is Bilal? We looked at the sons of Bilal to see the works of Bilal. See what I'm saying? To see what was cut off. So you can understand if you publish in Shalom, then you should already know what the most of you that Shalom spelled out is going to tell you to destroy the authority attached to chaos. Yeah. Not just death. When he talking about just cutting, when he talking about the wicked being cut off, I mean he cut off sin. So now you're not going to be committing idolatry like you've seen in Deuteronomy 13. You're not going to be around here lying and bearing false witness like we talked about what they did to Naboth. 
You're not going to be an unbeliever like they did to Saul. That's been cut off and removed. Well, it goes back to repent and cast away from you all your transgressions, lest iniquity be your ruin. All them people we read about, the sons of Belial, that, the stuff they did ended up being their destruction. See, a man came to David and called David a son of Belial. And you know what that's foreshadowing of? If that man Shemai called David a son of Belial, what is that foreshadowing of? When they called, turned around and called him Shia, Beelzebub. Because they were doing the works of Elohim and turned around and said they were doing the devil's work. When the whole time you doing the devil's work. So when you're looking at publishing Shalom, Nahum went and took it a whole nother step further. He told you to what? Keep thy solemn feast. On this festival pilgrimage feast, make your festival sacrifice so Belial can be cut off and not pass through here no more. This is what you're doing when you're publishing Shalom. So if you publish in Yahusha, you publish in Shalom. You're not publishing Shalom telling me about no law, cuz. And you're definitely not publishing that telling me about no I'm an Israelite. I don't get nothing from that. I don't want to hear nothing about no cultural dress. I don't want to hear nothing about none of that. That don't do nothing for me. That does not destroy the authority attached to death for me. That doesn't destroy the authority of, of, of sin for me. That does nothing for me. I'm going to tell you who that's for. That's for fronting niggas. Niggas who want to pretend to be something they're not. Like the master said in Matthew 23. Outside look beautiful. Inside full of dead men's bones. Because that doesn't profit you, you don't get no gain from that. You know what I'm saying? If you get good news and you don't get no gain from it, it's because your heart is hard as concrete. You know what I'm saying? You didn't want to hear you hard-hearted and stiff-necked. So, of course, he said the same gospel was preached unto us as well as unto them, but it didn't profit them, not being mixed in the faith of them that heard it. Because they got a gospel in the, in, the, in, the, in the Old Testament, too. What you think Moses was telling them people? Let's go ahead and look where he anointed Moses to preach the good news. Come on to Exodus chapter 3, verse 1. Let's go ahead and look at where he anointed Moses to preach the good news. I do it like that. We already seen Yahushua was anointed to do it, right? Let's turn around and see if, if Moses did it. And let's turn around and see if Moses sent somebody to do it too. Then we'll come back to finishing off Yahushua sending somebody to do it. Because the teaching that Moses was bringing was the teaching to join you to the highest as well. And they rejected it. Exodus 3 and 1. Proceed. It said, Now Moses kept the flock of Yethro, his father in law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of Elohim, even Horeb. Mm -hmm. And the Malachim of Yahuwah appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. It was consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight while the bush is not burnt. Mm -hmm. And when Yahuwah saw that he turned aside to see, and Elohim called out unto him in the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses, and he said, Here I am. And he said, Draw not nigh hither, put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place wherein thou standest is Kadash ground. Yes, sir. Moreover, he said, I am Elohim of thy father, Elohim of Abraham, and Elohim of Isaac, and Elohim of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon Elohim. And Yahuwah said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Mishraim, and I've heard the cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrow. And I have come to deliver them out of the hand of the Mishraim. He came to save them. And go ahead. And to bring them out of the land bring them out of that land unto a good good land and large, a land flowing with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanites, the Hizites, the Amorites, the Perizzites. Now he just told Moses good news, didn't he not? I see your affliction and what you're going through, and I'm going to come down and deliver you from that. He ain't told him nothing about no law. First thing he told him was some good news. He told him who he was and what I'm finna come do for you. So automatically he gave him a word of faith because he's gonna have to put his trust that this man is going to do exactly what he just told him he was gonna do. Go ahead. It says, Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Yashorah has come unto me, and I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Mishraim oppressed them. Now come, therefore, I will send upon Pharaoh that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Yashorah. Well, he just, told, he just told him that he going to bring him forth, didn't he? So right then, he just told Moses, I'm going to send you to do it. So now he's just anointed this man to do what? 
to preach good tidings because he the one got to tell him he finna set him free. What did Moses say when he said, well, go ahead and read it. You're getting close to it anyway. It said, Moses said unto Elohim, who am I that I should go into Pharaoh, that I should bring forth the children of Yashua out of Mizraim? And he said, certainly I will be with thee, and this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee. When thou hast that he had forth, what? When thou hast brought forth the people out of Mizraim, you shall serve Elohim upon this mountain. And Moses said unto Elohim, Behold, when I come to the children of Yashorah, and shall say unto them, The Elohim of your fathers have sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What So I can say, because remember, we're still dealing with the law and all this stuff. I can say, we can safely say that, Yah sent Moses. We can safely say that. Clearly, he had to be anointed with his Ruach for him to do it, right? Let's go to Exodus chapter 4, and let's stamp that then. Pick me up by verse 4 and 4, I suppose. Maybe by 4 and 8. It says, it shall come to pass if they will not believe thee, neither hearken unto the voice of the first sign, that they will believe the voice of the latter sign. Mm -hmm. And it shall come to pass if they will not believe also in these two signs, neither hearken unto thy voice, that thou shalt take of the water of the river and pour it upon dry land, and the water which thou takest out of the river shall become blood upon the dry land. Mm -hmm. And Moses said unto you, said unto Yahuwah, O oh, my master, I am not eloquent neither here too nor since that thou hast spoken unto thy servant but I am slow of speech and of a slow tongue mm -hmm. and you who said unto him who have made man's mouth or who maketh the dumb or the deaf or the seeing of the blind have not I you who mm -hmm. now therefore I will be with thy mouth and I will teach thee what thou shalt say hold on so if he'll teach him what he say that take us to Shalak right there then cause if y'all gonna teach Moses what he got to say what Moses finna go do he gonna teach Aaron and what he gonna go do? Go ahead. It says, And the anger of Yahuwah was killed against Moses, and he said, Is not Aaron the Levite thy brother? I know that he can speak well. And also, behold, he coming forth to meet thee, and when he seeth thee, he will be glad in his heart. And thou shalt speak unto him and put words in his mouth, and I will be with thy mouth and with his mouth, and will teach you that. So there that goes that whosoever receive you receive me, and whosoever receive him whom I send, well, he say whosoever I send receive me, and whosoever receive me receive him that sent me. Moses, son Aaron. You receive Aaron, you receive Moses. You receive Moses, you receive Yahuwah, because that's who sent him. Aaron was coming with a teaching to join you to the highest as well to separate you. The same thing that Moses was coming with. The same thing that Yahushua came with. And the same thing he gave to his apostles to go bring forth and preach into the earth. And that teaching was good news. You do not understand that the children of Yasharal did not get the law until after they had received the good news. They got the good news first. And then they got the law. I don't see how people overlook that. They just act like everything started from Exodus 20 on back. What's some of the things that Moses proclaimed to the children of Israel that would be considered good news? Because we don't have time to pinpoint every last one. He told him about a land of milk and honey of which he did that which Yah swore to his forefathers. What is another thing that he told them was going to happen? They what? Well, now that's afterwards. He ain't telling about that yet. He ain't telling about what they were going to do. Yeah, before the commandment. I'm talking about the good news that Moses came and told them before they went up out of Egypt. He preached the gospel to them. Yeah. He gave them good tidings. One of the first things he told them, he told them he free them from bondage. Number said, then we just read in Exodus three where he said these people, by the reason of their taskmasters, they cry inside. He were coming to heal the brokenhearted. These people heart were broke. We get beat down every day. You know what I'm saying? We get no press every day. And ain't nothing happening. What's another thing he told them would happen? He told them that he would avenge their enemies. And that he would destroy their enemies. He also told them before they departed that you're going to spoil these people before you leave here. And take all their good jewels. And all their good clothes. That's good news. Let's put it this way, right? Let's just transport ourselves into this days and time. If a man like Moses stood up and you knew full well that y'all son of me, he told you that, that would make you feel exceptional. So you mean to tell me all these white folks are going to get killed for what they've been doing now? And it ain't because they white, it's just because who would do it? Because you would have looked at it if they were Egyptians. It wouldn't have been no different. 
Because that's how they felt. So you mean to tell me all the Egyptians finna get killed for what they did to us? You mean you finna come get us, right? Because he did tell them he was going to avenge us on them. Why you think Mashiach say what he said in Luke 18 about I will avenge you speedily? It ain't got nothing to do because they Caucasian. Just unfortunately, they got to catch that. Same way them Arabs got to catch it wherever we at. Same way wherever we scattered, them people got to catch that. It is what it is. It's already been set and ordained. They vessels made unto destruction. You don't like it? Take it up with you. Are. I ain't got nothing to do with it. You know what I'm saying? They ain't got nothing to do because they white. You just happen to be the ones. Last time it was the Egyptians. Well, what first time it was the Egyptians. Sometimes it was the Philistines. A couple times it was the Babylon. It was the Babylonians. The Medes and Persians, they slid out of the way. They ain't catch it. Because y'all told them to let us go. And guess what Darius did? You can do it. They still got slid for the next empire. Yeah, I mean, they caught, they slid, but they ain't catch it on the way out. Yeah. Babylon caught theirs before we even dipped. You know what I'm saying? Medes and Persians, they didn't catch it. They didn't catch it when we left. They still were chilling for a little while. Because every empire has to fall, because then y'all going to ordain another one and let them do their thing. You know what I'm saying? That's just a cycle of things. They say most empires last 200 years. You know, United States at what? 242. So they overdue. If you would just go by the cycle of history, they overdue. I was just looking at something. They say the, uh, what it was, the Queen of England is worth trillion. You know what's just funny? Is that people don't even know that the British crown still controls and runs all the countries that are up under British co colonial rule. You know what I'm saying? The Queen of England still calls the shots in Jamaica. Don't be get, get excited because these niggas got prime ministers and all that. She got the last say in everything. You know what I'm saying? She still runs Canada. She still runs Australia. Anything that they name is on, she still run it. Man, they say, the, they say the price of the stones in her crown are not even reported openly. You know what I'm saying? This is one ghastly looking like. How is this woman still alive? I know y'all keeping her alive just to make sure she seal up the whole sum of her iniquity. This woman's about 90 something years old. You know what I'm saying? Man, I seen some junk man where it was like the prime minister of, I think it was Australia, had to get on his knee behind this ugly white woman. Like she has the authority to override any legislation in any of these countries whenever she sees fit. Some of them countries got her face on their money. How many people you know actually alive and face is on some money? You notice the United Kingdom was the only the only main country in Europe that wasn't a part of the European Union. But that, be, that lady ain't going for that. Just for the most part, if there's still a monarchy in France, you best believe they probably still control Haiti. Like the monarchs in these other countries never went nowhere, they just went underground. Continue on, sir. Oh, we good on that. Come over here to John chapter 21. Fitting up at verse 7. No, verse 15, actually. Now we're going to sit back and look at him sending Peter. John 21 and 15. It says, So when they had died, Yahushua said unto Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He said unto him, Yea, master, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my lambs. And he said unto him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He said unto him, Yea, master, thou knowest that thou love thee. He said unto him, Feed my sheep. He said unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, does thou love me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him a third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Master, thou knowest all things, and thou knowest that I love thee. You should say unto him, Feed thy sheep. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, When thou was young, thou girded thyself, and walkest whether thou wouldest, but when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands. That's good, that's good, that's good. So can we say that he sunk Peter, right? We could read what Peter say to feed the lamb of Elohim. You know what I'm talking about? And not with restraint, but willingly. And not for filthy lucre's sake. Now let's come on back to Isaiah chapter 61. Isaiah 61.
And now we're looking at, right, he sent him to bind up the brokenhearted. So the word that we have for brokenhearted is kabosh. You go ahead, man. C-H-A-B-A-S-H. -H. C-H-A-B-A-S-H, kabosh. It's three characters. It means to tie, to bind up, to saddle, to restrain, to govern, and also to heal. So he came to heal the brokenhearted. This is what we're talking about. What's the first character we would use? Mm -hmm. And what would be the next one? Kabosh. Bind up. He coming to heal the broken heart. You got cotton. What else would you have? Mm hmm. And what would be the laughing? We got kibosh. We got the uh. What we got? The cot, the bot, and what would be the last one? God. It's kibosh. Yes, man. You had to shin the enemy. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was already up there. So yeah, that's, good. that's the shin. Y'all got it? Oh. So when we got caught with this one here, I think we would probably use protect or surround. To pair with the son. That's what he coming to do. Because that's what. If you're healing someone. Then you're protecting them from what? Because in, in Psalms he tell you that. Yah came to heal us from all our diseases. So what is Yahusha protecting you from? He protecting you from death. Because this is what he came. Because he said to heal the broken hearted. In Matthew 5 and 4. Look what he say right. Then we're going to look at broken hearted. I had a lot of other stuff for this here, but there's no way we're going to get all this in one day. Baruch, I think that mourn for they shall be comforted. They be what? Comforted. What you mourning for? This is tied to what we talked about Wednesday that I mentioned last night. What you mourning for? Why you broken hearted? That's why them people were mourning. What did, what did Nehemiah have to tell the people to? Don't weep. They were broken hearted when they heard they were condemned. When y'all first heard the word, how many of y'all were broken hearted when you heard it? Oh. We're not talking about the whore. <laughs> <laughs> At least you're honest with yourself. Well. <laughs> Truth be told, God, I be. The, oh, yeah, she definitely was a whore. I mean, I'm gonna tell you something. I'm gonna be honest with you though. But see the see the see the thing of the matter is that's why them people were weeping when they heard the word because they looked at it and see I am. See that's why people don't get right because you won't look yourself in the mirror and say I'm a whore, I'm a liar, I'm a thief, I'm a murderer, I'm an idolater. See that's why people don't get right. How you even gonna heal what's wrong with you if you can't even acknowledge? Because guess what? The minute you open your legs and you want Mary to cook. No, but see the thing is, you can you can know it. It don't mean nothing till you open your mouth and confess it. That's why he tell you to confess it. Oh no, that don't make you no horse. Yeah, when I read the Bible, I thought, oh yeah. You open your legs. But the average person is not going to equate to having sex and not being married to being a whore. No. No. Nigga feel like if I got a boyfriend. But you saying no, it ain't right. See, you missing the point. The point of the matter is you can't fix nothing until you can look yourself in the mirror and say, I am a hope. Same way people convinced they self stuff is right. Same. You because because you say that I'm wrong and I need to stop. Because until you can, 
Get, 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 listen. Uh, listen, what does the law, what our law tell you to do? What The same thing, you got to confess it. You have to say it out of your mouth. Because like what he said, the heart of man believeth unto salvation, and the mouth come with confession. So niggas don't actually fix nothing, because they won't open their mouth and say, I got a problem with touching myself. You'd be surprised how many people in this world feel like, I done had dudes call me like, dude told me I could masturbate as long as I take a shower. <laughs> because the law say once you ejaculate that you got to bathe. And because you unclean from releasing bodily fluid. Then you bathe and then at when the sun go down, you clean so you can go ahead and rape yourself all you want to. As long as you clean yourself. I'm dead serious, bro. I'm dead serious. <laughs> Absolutely. There's plenty of people who I didn't have plenty. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're not. I don't doubt he said it at all. Nigga around here thinking about me and he liable to think about anything. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Shoot. You know what I'm saying? What I'm telling you? But I'm just, I'm just sitting here saying that though. It's the same token of if you were horn around, you got some people, boy, they don't want to admit they sins, boy. That was James 5 that I'm talking about. That I asked for earlier. <laughs> Niggas won't, won't admit they sins. So because they won't admit they sin, go on and get it. James 5 and 17. <laughs> That's why they won't get right. That's why when you get immersed, that's why he has you confess, which goes back to the law. Because if you can stand in front of everybody and say, you know what? I'm a liar. I'm a thief. I'm an idolater. You should be so shamed that you would never do it again. <clears throat> See, I just had a conversation with a lady. It wasn't on no sin or nothing, but... She just had a particular issue with this, that, then, the third. And I'm like, it's because you've been carrying this your whole life. And until you express it verbally to the, to the source of where that pain is coming from, you're going to continue to deal with it. Do you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, you know what? The biggest mistake most people make is if they feel like somebody did them wrong, that they feel like they need an apology or some closure from this nigga. No, get that junk off your chest. You doing that for yourself, regardless if that nigga say, I'm sorry or not. Screw them. You shouldn't be doing it looking for no apology. Nigga, apologize. Nigga, apologize. If they reconcile, even the better. If they don't, you got that junk off your chest. Stop carrying all that dead weight. That's the same thing with sin. That's why Hebrews 12 tell you, lay aside the weight that easily besets you and run the race with patience because you're carrying stuff that you need to let go of. Go ahead. It says, Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are, and he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the rats by the space of three years and six months. Mm -hmm. And he prayed again, and shaman he gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. Brother, if any of you do err from the truth and love, and one convert him, let him know that he was converted the sinner from the error of his ways to save a soul from death. You, and, and the verse that I was mentioning was confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that you might be healed. Oh, my God. That was <laughs> no, but I said 17 and then 16. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But look at the thing he said. If one, if person errs from the faith, if you were the one who, who bring them back, you cover. See, niggas read that and thinking they getting their sins covered. No, clown, you covering that person's sins. Thinking they sins cover. Niggas so worried about fame and adulation and credit. I say this minute. I see the nigga talking about how many people you waking up. Is this a competition, nigga? That's what you worried about. Who's waking up how many people? Waking them up to what? Come on, bike man. Where we at? Stay woke. Not stay woke. Woke for what? Matthew 5 and 5. Are oh, we good at Matthew 5 and 5? Come on back, man. Now we're looking at the word for broken hearted. That word is Shabar. It is S H A B A R. <laughs> Come get your husband, man. Shabar. Shabar. What characters will we have for that? It's another, th it's another three piece. Shabar. It means to break into pieces, to break down, to crush, to quench. To shatter, to break, to bring to the birth, to break down, or to break in pieces. What characters will we get for Shabar? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. So, when we look at that with the shin again, we would probably have to go ahead and use destroy for this one. Yeah, or consume. Broken. I'm assuming so. You know what I'm saying? So if we got the bot, we're going to have to sit back and look at We're going to have to use the house. And when we go at the garage, we're going to have to sit back and look at the thoughts of the house. So the 
the, the thoughts of the house are broken. Let's go to Job 13, verse 14. This is why Paul states of you by uh, being renewed in the thoughts of your mind. You said what now? Job 13 and 14. So when he say he came to bind up the brokenhearted, he's coming to sit back and he's coming to fix those whose thoughts are broken in the tabernacle. Job 13 and 14. It said, wherefore do I take my flesh and my teeth and put my life in my hand? Though he slay me, yet I will trust him, but I will, main, I will maintain my own ways. That ain't what I want. I want Job 11 and 13. 11 and 13. It says, If thou prepare thine heart and stretch out thy hand towards him, if iniquity be in thine hand, put it far away. Let not wickedness dwell in my tabernacle. For then thou shalt lift up my face without spot, yea, thou shalt be steadfast. Now Job said that no, don't let wickedness dwell in his tabernacles. Who can we look at in this book that was broken hearted? Because of their thoughts or their actions was able to consume or destroy their house. Not saying that they necessarily died, but someone who was broken hearted by reason of their actions. You say David? Well, let's remove David from the equation because that's too easy. Oh. <laughs> There are plenty. I mean, you got plenty. Elijah. Well, how would you say Elijah was broken hearted that he needed to be healed? No, I. Why would you? Why would Why would Elijah have been broken hearted? He was. He was broken hearted. Well, now his thoughts ain't destroyed. So I was gonna say he was broken hearted because they were killing people. Yeah, and he felt like he wanted to die. I was looking at it like that. How you gonna get persecuted? Yeah, but his thoughts didn't destroy his house. When you're looking at that, you would need to think about somebody who actually sinned. So you would need to think about Ahab, because when Ahab. Because when Ahab's thoughts destroyed his house, what's the first thing he did? He rent his garments. He wept and he repented, did he not? And y'all bound him up. He told him, I'll kill all your sons. But I'm not going to kill you today. Manasseh was definitely broken hearted. Just look at that. Like, what, last week? Because you got to remember, he's coming to bind up the broken hearted. What got them broke? They thoughts got them broke. You know what I'm saying? So, Paul was broken. You, you can look and say Paul was broken hearted. Yeah. But I will, you know, I'll use that because I ain't specified New Testament versus old. But Paul is acceptable. Because I was finna go to, now we got to look at in the Gospels who was broken hearted that Yahoo shot bound up. No. We read one last night. That was the kids. Because he said he was a sinner. Who is a person that Yahusha bound up who was broken hearted? Who was healed because of their sins? This is what he came to do. Oh, well, let's look at her then. Luke 7 and 43. Can anybody think of anybody else besides Mary? That whom was thoughts destroyed their house or their tabernacle and Yahusha healed their broken heart. The adulterous woman is another because we just read about her last night too. That's why we don't got to read her story. So we're looking at how he, so this is where you come at to see how he came to deliver sinners. Which is why the book tells you constantly to renew your mind. Continue on, sir. Luke 7 and 40. Make it 40. It said... It said, and Yahushua answered and said unto him, Simon... I have somewhat to say unto thee, and he said, Master, say on. There was a certain creditor which had two debtors, the one owed five hundred pence, and the other fifty. And mm -hmm. when they had nothing to pay, 
he frankly forgave them both. He yeah, frankly did what? Forgave them both. Don't you think if you had a debt, you'd be pretty broken hearted about your debt? Go ahead. Tell me therefore which of them will love him the most. Simon answered and said, I suppose he that whom we forgave the most, and he said him, thou hast rightly judged. And he, hey, turned, boy. and he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, See as thou this woman, I entered into thy house, and thou gave me no water for my feet, but she hath washed my feet with tears, and wiped them with hairs on her head. Thou gavest me no kiss, but this woman since time I came in have not ceased kissing my feet. My head with oil thou didst anoint, but this woman hath anointed my feet with ointment. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins which are many are forgiven, for she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. Now what was this woman doing? What she what she washed his feet with? <laughs> no, with her tears. No, no, no. You think about when his head got anointed. She did that with strictly her tears. He said, you didn't anoint my... No, he said, you didn't... When I came in here, you didn't bring me no anointment to uh, anoint my feet. That woman washed his feet. say, this woman has anointed my feet with ointment. My mind said anoint her feet with tears. No, it said that. It said both. She had washed my feet. It said he washed his feet and then she said... No, then he's telling Peter that when I came through the door... Nobody gave me any ointment for my head. Nobody gave me nothing to wash my feet. Nobody gave me anything. Yeah, but that woman did that with her tears and her hair. Oh, what's wrong? They said you didn't put no oil on my head, but you put oil on my feet. Well, before that, they wouldn't say she put oil on the work. So then they see you know she used her tears. She washed his. You gonna wash with no ointment? They said she kissed his feet. Yeah, I said anointed, but I said we talking about. I'm strictly talking about the washing. Just the wash. So she why would she wash his feet with tears? What would cause her to do that? She would, why would she be broken hearted? Because what did they describe her as being? No, they didn't say she was a whore. A lot of people assumed Mary was a whore. They didn't say she was a whore, though. She was a sinner. What her sins was, I don't know. I mean, sure, you got a lot of women out here who sinners who ain't whores. You know, you could be a whore and not sleep around. Oh, you think I'm lying? Don't give me that Jeremiah chapter 2. I ain't lying. No, he said, I'm just saying the word is lying. No, no, I'm talking about as far as like, yeah, I can show you like, you could be a whore and not and not sleep around. Like, Beyonce is is a whore, even though she's married, she is a whore because she promotes whoredom. Whoredom is past tooting your booty in the air. I mean, there's a lot of famous women who are whores because they promote whore, and they may only sleep with one man, biggest whore on the block. What is it? Jeremiah chapter 2. It might be, though, it's chapter 3. Jeremiah 3, by verse 3. It says, Wherefore the showers have been withholding, and they have. Nah, they got nothing to do with dress. No, nah, that's something DC that has. Yeah, it's in this chapter, though. Yeah, it's right there. It's just three and three on the dot. That's exactly what I want. So look, just it wait for it. It says, therefore the showers have been withholding, and there has been no latter rain, and thou hast a whore's forehead, thou refusest to be ashamed. That's the first sign of a whore. You know what it means to have a whore's forehead? Now, if you got a whore's forehead, what, what you think that means? Not this shame. Take this shame and put that to the side. What does it mean to have a whore's forehead? What you think it mean to have a whore's forehead, Leisha? A whore's forehead. <laughs> D, what you think it means to have a whore's forehead? What you think it means to have a whore's forehead? Shayla, what you think it means to have a whore's forehead? Huh? 
Lee, what you think it means to have a horse forehead? What about you, Lisa? Kelly? No, a horse forehead means you stubborn, you stiff necked, you rebellious, you disobedient, you don't listen, you self willed. That's why I say you refuse to be ashamed. Because you want to do what you want to do. You know what I'm saying? And can't nobody tell you nothing. That's it, because he's talking about Yasharal. Do we have to, we, could we go through this law and see how Yasharal got a horse forehead? You know what I'm saying? And when you stubborn, then you ain't never ashamed. Look at all these women out here. Be glad. The book tell you they like, the, they like, they declare they sin like Sodom and they not ashamed. You got women glad to tell you they suck multiple penises online. Ain't got no problem with it. You know what I'm saying? Ain't got no problem with it. And somebody come tell them you need to keep that penis out your mouth. It's an issue. Y'all seen that video uh, Kira put in there? That, that, that old black woman wasn't lying. You around here swallowing bodily fluids, you might as well eat some swine. You might as well. You know what I'm talking about? And guess what the whole world feel like? Ain't nothing wrong with eating a booty. It's still, niggas have no problem talking about putting their mouth on a grown person's anus. And have the nerve to say that's a snack. No, you're disgusting. You gay, nigga. That's what you is. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> well, ain't no straight man got no business putting his mouth on nobody's record. Definitely ain't got no business letting nobody put their mouth on his. <laughs> Look here, man. It's too many of these niggas talking about they getting their booty in, so somebody out here doing it. Something too. Screw tank, nigga. I'm talking about niggas. You go, niggas. You talking about? Let me get a number three with fries, nigga. He out here doing it and getting it done. Because the reason why I say this here because the state of the world, nigga. We would have went back 1998 when I was 18 years old. Ain't no way in the world nobody would have came out and said they put their mouth on nobody's booty. No, 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 you can say doing it. Go, no, listen to what I'm telling you. You stay talking about celebrities. Screw a celebrity. I'm talking about regular people. No, now ain't no regular person in 1998 would walk around talking about they put trick that it didn't come out again. You talking about celebrities. No, man, you, you're not listening to what I'm telling you. Niggas was not walking around talking about they ate vagina in 1998. <laughs> Nobody said nothing about not doing it. Man, come on, man. Look at man. Niggas know niggas was eating vagina when we was in high school. And we knew hoes were giving down. But ain't nobody walk around talking about, ooh, boy, I eat her boo. That's what I said. That's what I said. Ain't nobody walk around talking about, I eat booty. You were not proud to tell a nigga you put your mouth on a nigga's booty. Why are you proud to even say that? <laughs> you didn't talk about that openly. Now you walking around, oh, it looked like a snack. No, nigga, you nasty. <laughs> Well, ain't nobody, ain't nobody genitalia or rectum a meal. A meal I can swallow and process through my intestines. That's nasty. That ain't right. That ain't right. That ain't right. Well, I seen a nigga say, talking about, I seen a nigga told the chick, you say you a, a, a snipe. That nigga say you look like prison food. I say, God. <laughs> prison food. Prison food is disgusting. <laughs> Goodness grief. But I'm just being honest though. All jokes aside though. <laughs> All jokes aside though. It's stuff that people walk around. And I'm telling you for certain, niggas ain't walk around talking about they was no punk or no bulldog in the 90s. I'm telling you that right now. Oh, no. Now, oh, we talking about, again, you looking at a difference of people doing stuff and being open. See, now, nobody cares what you know they do. You know what I'm saying? Niggas, it's cool, it's cool now to be a junkie. Nobody has a problem with it. You couldn't be no junkie in the 90s. You were getting clowned. You know what I'm saying? I knew niggas who snorted cocaine for years, and none of us knew it till we got grown. Because the nigga ain't want you to know he snorted no coke. You know what I'm saying? Nigga ain't want you to know. Niggas was, the only thing niggas wasn't hiding was smoking weed. And nigga didn't want their people to know they smoking weed. You know what I'm saying, man? 
Now you got these niggas, they don't care. It 20, that's how you know the world come is drawn to a close, because niggas don't care. When you got when you got numerous songs talking about doing stuff to people's rectum, you know you're in trouble. I'm talking about as a society, you in trouble. Kevin Gates a Muslim. You know what I'm saying? He a Muslim. <laughs> talking about he eat somebody boo. Come on, man. You know what I'm saying? You got grown men that have no problem saying that they like that to be done to them. Do you know what I'm saying? Publicly. Come on, man. That's not normal. You know that, and that's the bad part about it, is that certain behaviors that you don't become desensitized to it to where you feel like that's normal. Look at this here, right? You got women that say, ain't no big deal if I sleep with 20, 30, 40 niggas. Nobody should have a problem with that. You know what I'm saying? The bad part about this society is, is that a man would not want a woman who's been with a lot of women, I mean, uh, with a lot of men, but a woman wouldn't have no problem if a man been with a lot of women. And both are equally disgusting. Especially according to our God. He ain't gonna sit back and look at it with shoot, girl, he been with 70 women. I know he experienced, that nigga's nasty. You know what I'm talking about? What's a lot of, I'm talking about, what's a lot of niggas swinging dirty sticks out here and these niggas don't care? Well, we already know that, that. I mean, the average man don't want no woman who dirty like that to be a lady. He just want to have some fun with her. I'll tell you that, a man, I'm pretty, uh, the average carnal-minded man will lay with anything. You know what I'm saying? He'll lay with it. He don't care. She offering, I'm taking. You know what I'm talking about? That's why when you get in the word and you notice that people be so looking for a husband or looking for a wife so bad. Because they coming from having a mindset, a way of living, of getting off. So they still trying to get off. Where we at? Hey children, children, y'all making entirely too much noise. Entirely too much noise. Find yourself somewhere and sit down. Yeah, we good at Jeremy. Yeah, come on back. To oh, we good with Luke. We finished with Luke. But now I didn't want y'all to see what it meant to be a, a whore. Uh, being a whore is a mentality along with an action. Because you can, like I said, you can be a whore and be married for 20 years. Some of y'all know people who've been married for 20 years. They never cheated on their husband and stone cold whores, too. Why you think the book say it's better for you to live on a housetop than with a contentious woman? A contentious woman is a whore. You don't want to, nobody want to live with no whore. That's hey, what they, I was talking about that Jezebel. I did. Huh? He's a stubborn. Oh, okay. Like the Jezebel spirit. The Jezebel spirit that, Jezebel spirit that, Jezebel spirit that niggas like to talk about. Jezebel wasn't no whore. She was married. So what? Jezebel definitely wasn't no whore. And she wasn't stubborn. She just was a conniving woman. You know what I'm saying? And it ain't necessarily that she, she was conniving. But at the same token, Ahab was a weak man. He let her do what she wanted to do. See, you got women with a horse forehead, and then you got spineless yellow back men that just let a woman run them. Yellow back, man. Cow. Yellow belly. All that. Man, I said it wrong. It's yellow belly. No, it's yellow belly. You know what I'm saying? Because ain't nothing worse than the worst thing in the world to see in a man is a man who get ran by they by they woman. That's the most. The, that's the, that's just horrible to see. It is very sad. <laughs> Cause like here, right? I have not met a real woman in my life that want to be with a man that she can run. I've never met one. Only women that I've met that want to run a man are whores. You know what I'm saying? I know some women that dudes would be like, "Oh man, she won't listen to nobody. She just that there in the third. And I don't see real niggas telling that woman sit down and shut her mouth and do what he ever, whatever she told him to do. She had no problem with it. She was glad to do it. I done seen that. I done seen niggas get emasculated. Your old lady screaming on you in public. Shoot, you better hit her with a halluva kick and send her on her way. That ain't cool, man. The book tell you that, though. Solomon definitely told you it's better for you to, shoot, get your shit. Just move out. Just move out. That's the worst thing in the world to be married to a whore. 
And we ain't talking about her throwing no, no boot in there. Because, you know, our law tell you you a whore if you had sex in your father's house and you weren't married. It didn't say nothing to Deuteronomy about she slept around with 13, 14 different dudes. That man said he went to give you to marry you off to somebody. And and, and, and that hymen would bust and say, you done played a whore in your father's house. Boy, you got to think how shame that is for the be a father. That's shame. <laughs> well, you got that little nigga that said he's going to pay this and do pay that. that. Take care of your daughter and do that. And the freshness seal is broken. Get around to the first night. That's loose. Loose part. I can't take this. <laughs> I can't take this. I need my refund, bro. Rapid refund, nigga. What you say it was? It's my money. <laughs> it was not what you said it would be. That's a that's the difference. Of, boy, that wasn't no proud. Women be proud around here. Nigga proud to tell you how young they was. They lost their virginity. People proud of this here, boy. In our in in the, in, in the old days and times, in the ancient days, you would have been shamed. Shoot, in the fifties, you would have been shamed because they tiptoed back then. They tiptoed. They tiptoed. <laughs> but guess what? It's a lot of people who got married to people they ain't want to be married to because they got pregnant. They ain't nobody want you to shame the family. This old stinking slut around here done got pregnant. Now you finna marry this nigga. I don't even love it. That definitely how it was. That's how I was. That, like, that, 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 that ain't that far long ago. That wasn't that far long ago. That wasn't that long ago. I was like in the 70s. 50s. 40s, late, early 60s, yeah. 30s, 20s. Yeah, they were getting, they were hunching. Yeah, they were hunching good. Come home pregnant though. Now you gotta marry this nigga. I just wanted to have a good time with her. She your wife now. Yeah, in the 70s, I heard that. Yeah. You could not come to Yeah. But it ain't on that. That's what I'm Yeah, they have them. Shoot, they ain't using them now, they got them. Shoot. You got all type lamb skin. The, the ultra thin, groove, well, and all that. They ain't using none of that. Everybody grab my taking care of their kids. But it's a part of the level of the shame. But check this out though. Check this out though. Just imagine this here though. Just imagine this here though. If you knew you had to marry a nigga you had a baby with, you'll be a lot more careful who you bust your legs open to. They be doing, they be doing. No, I'm talking about if you knew for certain you gotta marry this nigga if you come home pregnant. No, nah, but he didn't even do it. Shoot, for some women, they gonna be like, oh, you you always and that's ne it's never gonna be a hundred percent. But a lot of more people, I'm gonna think about that. I'm thinking. I'm telling you, that's why a lot of people who's in marriages for all these long. They ain't love this nigga. They ain't want to be with this nigga. They ain't have no choice. That's tight. Cause 15, that's too young. No, my, my, I tried marrying this man 15. You gotta go, baby. Yeah, hey, you gotta go. You got to go. That's what I'm saying. If you knew, if you knew, see, if you knew that you had to marry the nigga you had a baby from, that'll make you really seriously consider who you open your legs to. You know what I'm saying? Oh, that's a whole that that ain't that ain't no that's a totally different scenario. Cause they cause I mean, matter of fact, truth be told, you may have not came up pregnant, but our law said if you went and laid with a nigga, it, I mean our law tell us if you went and laid with a woman, regardless if she got pregnant or not, and she wasn't betrothed to another man, you would have had to marry that woman. Okay. No, not married. she not married. So basically, if a dude came through, finessed you out a little booty. He got to marry you. If you got raped, that nigga died. Yeah. I thought it, I thought it, he raped. No, it says if she don't scream. Yeah. Basically, if she was like, oh, that nigga ain't raped you, you were with it. Both of y'all died. But if a nigga. I mean, that that's just somebody who is devoid of all intelligence. So that's not a conversation we can have. <laughs> Now, they ain't gonna get no cup. They ain't gonna go. Cause get what? They're talking about you married to who you had sex to. So you married to the first person who took your virginity. Same nigga tell you that got a wife who he wasn't his first. So you cancel. Because let's say if that was a theory, if that was reality, oh, it's a lot of people be you'd be totally upset if you had to marry the nigga who took your virginity. And let's say if that was true, you'd definitely be a lot more careful about who you open your leg to if you knew you had to marry this nigga. And niggas would be a lot more careful who lays they jumped in between if they knew they had to marry this nigga. See, but that's why I was telling you about this here. That's why people be getting messed up because 
They won't even take their time to actually get to know somebody before they get married to them. Then your next thing you know, you done had a baby with this nigga, now you stuck with him. Then when you talk about it when in, in, our, in our lifestyle, you marry him, that's over. <clears throat> Ain't no divorce. Ain't no none of that. You stuck with this nigga. You know what I'm saying? So you better make sure you want to be stuck there. I mean, I can say this. Let's say, if you don't want to go to hell, you stuck with him. Now, if you don't care about going to hell, you ain't stuck with nobody. You get up and go do what you want to do. You can leave him and go get you another one and another one and another one. It don't make no difference. Get married four or five times if you want to. That's if you if you don't care about going to hell. Shoot, I know a girl I went to high school with been married five times. We ain't but 38. Yeah, we in her same graduating class from our neighborhood. I know a whole family. That's my nigga. You know what I'm talking about? The, the father of her, her child is my nigga. And that nigga's been married five times. Five times. I know if I, I, I know if after the third marriage, I'm good. I'm just through. This ain't for me. She got married young. Yeah, you get married early. You get married early. Three ain't really that many, though. I think she might have had her first marriage. We were nineteen. Yeah, we both the same age. I'm gonna be thirty-eight. I think her birthday before mine. It's a lot of people. These people get married and be divorced in a year. And you know why they be divorced in a year? Because they didn't really know the person they were married to. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I say, I, like I told, you, I told you last night, right? It probably take a good, it probably take almost a, and you ain't gonna, or maybe necessarily inside and out. It take about a good year and a half, two years to get to know somebody, like really know them. It depends. And it also only the only. No, but that too. But the only caveat is the thing that can speed up getting to know somebody is the situations and circumstances that y'all encounter together. That's the only caveat. Cause if you ain't went, cause I can tell you last night, you ain't gonna really know somebody till you see how they handle adversity. You know what I'm saying? You ain't gonna really know them. That's why. Why you think when we talk about the book, the book tell you he got to try you. It's real easy to serve y'all when everything's smooth. But when he try you, I want him to see what's in your heart. Like you ain't gonna really know. You ain't gonna really know. See if a nigga got got to face with a difficult situation, how he handle it. Like as a woman, a woman ain't gonna want to be with no dude if he face some difficult situation. Nigga, panic. Cause that mean when something go down, you gonna panic. You gonna seek the whole ship. I can't put my trust. This nigga can direct stuff every sign. Something bad go on. This nigga freak out and panic. What do we do? You know what I'm saying? Cause if you mean if you acting like that, you don't have control. Of, at least if you panic and don't let me see it. Bye. Come on, what? Bye. What she say? Please go. Please go. What is this? What you talking about? See, what you what you just said? Why you eat? That was wrong with your problem now. Wrong meatball. That's your problem now. You threw that off the back for me. I did not mean to say it like that. Duck on you like LeBron dunked on that white boy from Portland. Mm-hmm. Meatball. That's why you're around here talking about you a whore. Meatballs. You used to dream about balls in school, didn't you? <laughs> I hope you wasn't around here judging no balls. <laughs> All seriousness, though. You know what I'm saying? It's the same token with a woman. And you want to see how a woman handle adversity. You know what I'm saying? Like, you want to see how a woman handle her money. It's a lot of people that got divorced because one or both of them didn't handle money well. Usually the stereotype is the woman don't handle it well, but it's just as many men don't handle money well as women. If not more. You know what I'm saying? Niggas just go buy stuff. You know what I'm saying? I done seen people like this here, boy, you ain't got nowhere to stay. Nigga go buy brand new, brand new outfits and sneakers. You ain't got nowhere to live, cuz. You know what I'm saying? Woman, you ain't got nowhere to live. You just spent $500 on a weave. To go impress whom? This the down payment for the prostitution. 
<laughs> trying to tell you, come on back, Isaiah. Say, out there. Yeah, it's different if you're tricking, but soon some of these hoes ain't even tricking. They ain't even trying to find that. They, they, they just out here. I just want to look good. Look good for who? The bed bugs? Snapchat. Snapchat and Instagram. I got a thousand likes, girl. How much money you got, though? Three dollars and fifteen cents. Can you buy me a uh, a McDonald's, a, a, some off the value menu? Shoot, I can't. Beck can't even buy a Grand Mac. Nigga can't even get a KFC five for five bucks. I'm for real though, but these niggas ain't no better. I ain't never seen. Hi, hi. You know the craziest, dumbest thing you ever seen? Niggas with designer belts on the city bus. Oh, wow. I seen plenty of them. They don't be real. I seen plenty of them. Whether they real or not. They don't be real. The boy was fresh off the kid. Whether they real. I seen plenty of them. Hey, whether they real, whether they real or not is not the issue. Even it's stupid if they real or not. You see them bags, you bags, and you on the bus. You on the bus. Clean as ever. Clean as ever. Like this here. The bus come at 622. No, nah, my nigga, save that bread and get you a whip, cuz. Don't buy you no Gucci bag. I seen some mean where they were climbing, nigga was selling bags. Nigga say, hey, I got these bags over here. Tell me, I ain't buying them bag, them fake bags. I paid $800 for this bag. The nigga say, you should have saved your money and bought you a washing machine. You wouldn't be at the laundromat. Got him. Your feelings should have been hurt for being dumb. Nigga talking about you don't buy no fake bags, you at the laundromat. It ain't cross your mind to buy a washing machine. <laughs> but you got a Louis bag. It had a nerve to have an attitude. <laughs> I mean, sit back and look at it, though. Just sit back and think about the stuff we do. I told you like this. Black people are the poorest people on the world and look down on uh, other poor people because you spent money you didn't have on something that you couldn't afford just to say, like, an, I got this. I got this. Look at these sneakers. Look at my outfit. You don't know nothing about this. He's Tom Jacobs. But you live in the Jets, ho. <laughs> Whatever it is, Mark Jacobs. That's the thing. I would think about I thought somebody was going No, I would think about I said Jacobs, but I would think about I would think about Tom Ford. I would think about Tom Ford. I ain't gonna say it. Nigga, I done seen the pair. No, I saw Ben. No, I thought my no, I wouldn't make it up. Because it's like, I wear, and you know, you know I like them es escadrilles, right? Tom Ford, Tom Ford got shoes, cost like $1,200, $1,300. Like, Three, four, five hundred dollar bottles of cologne. And then, you know, the crazy part is, both of them faggots. Both of them faggots. Stone cold homo. Well, Gucci has a multiple different designs. I mean, it ain't even a... I mean, look, it ain't even about all that. It's about that. Why are you buying a thousand dollar sneakers and you can't afford it? But then it's not even the point of because if you can afford it, buy whatever you want to buy. You know what I'm talking about? But my point is this here: you got on a thousand dollars. I don't wear nothing but jeans. How you sound? You know what I'm saying? Like how you sound? Everybody sitting here poor and poor people looking down on other poor people about what they wear or they don't wear. That's retarded. It's dumb. Like, come on, man. And the only reason why niggas feel, only reason why our people feel that way about that, because that's self validation for you. But a nigga ain't made it. Look at it, right? You ain't made it if you still have more bit. Like that's a uh, that's an asset that you can't even convert. Niggas is proud of showing you all. It's different. You got niggas who collect shoes. You know what I'm saying? Like really collect them. That's a whole nigga showing. Look at all my J's, cause. But you ain't got nothing though. You have nothing. All you can show a nigga is some shoes and some outfits, and when you die, your people on the internet asking niggas for money to bury you. And I'm talking about, and we ain't talking about 19, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. We're not talking about 19, 20 year old kids, because they ain't supposed to have no money to bury themselves. We're talking about niggas 27, 30, 35. You got all these fits on, and now your people on here asking for money. Why you ain't buy a life insurance policy, nigga? But you got all these Gucci sneakers though, you ain't bought no life insurance. 
You know what I'm saying? You ain't had no money in your account. All you got to lead in your churn is some belts and some shoes and some outfits. But we talk about mentality. Come on back now. It's a lot of niggas in their 30s like that. Chasing their youth. You grown, con. Let it go. Isaiah 61, man. We're looking at the word for liberty. He proclaimed liberty. The word for liberty is Doror. It's D E R O W R. Folk characters. D E R O W R. I'll probably continue the rest of this next week on the good things. No, this is how you try to change your mentality. Because when you and the word "derar" means flowing, free run, liberty, flowing of myrrh or liberty, also pure. So it's a spontaneity of outflow. So what is the first character that we would use for this word? Uh huh. The dollar would be the first one that we would use. What would we use next? Mm hmm. And what would we use after that? No, we wouldn't use the olive. It's D-E-R-O-W-R. The O is what we would use. And the rest again. So if we get Dalit, what would we use for Dalit? If we're talking about freedom, liberty. We can use interest. Okay. I'm trying to find the thing. This nigga here, wow. Mm-hmm. So we definitely gonna use interest on that. And what's the next character we had? A Raj, right? So what will we use on that one? If we looking at it, we talking about freedom, then we gonna sit back and we probably will use uh, your thoughts. And then for ooh, what will we use? Uh, establish. Establish? <laughs> you got the secure or the join together, the hook, a nail, a tent peg, the add. Entrance, right? So we go entrance, then we go to right the entrance of your thoughts that cause you to be joined together to the highest. It's probably the best half pack that we can take. It's kind of weird. Yeah. Double R, right? Yeah. You know about that double R. Right? Yeah. Camp is strong. We're riders, man. So you don't ride no, no motorbikes. So, how did he turn around and he proclaimed liberty? One of the things we looked at him proclaiming liberty is like, because we got to sit back and look at what Yahoo shot. We mentioned what Yahoo shot healed the brokenhearted. Now we can sit back and look at where he, he could proclaim freedom to the captives. One of the places we looked at in Luke, when he healed that lady who had the issue of blood, when he said this woman had been bound by Satan for these 18 years. Who's another person who he freed? He freed a couple other people. Who did he free? He freed Lazarus. Who else did he free? He freed Mary Magdalene. What did he free Mary Magdalene from? From her deep, because she had seven unclean spirits in her. See, a lot of people say Mary Magdalene was a whore. The book doesn't say she was a whore. The book says she had unclean spirits in her. He prayed to the man at the pool of Shalom. He freed that man from his bondage. What about the blind man in John chapter 9? He freed him. What about, uh, because they were captains. Peter mama. He fr- Peter mama, because she was sick. You know what I'm talking about? What about the little girl who died? Freed her. Even with Mary, that we just read, he freed her. How did he free her? Because he told her, your sins are forgiven. You know what I'm saying? Not one, it's not too many times you see Yahoo Shah sitting down talking to anybody about no law. You know what I'm saying? You don't see him doing that too often. 
the, fir the first thing that pop in the head is the thing that Israelites run to to tell everybody, see, Yahushua, Jesus said, keep the law. What should I do to enter in the life? Keep the commandment. Which one? See, there was no need for Yahushua to walk around and talk to them about the law because these people already knew they were supposed to keep it. What they didn't have was the faith and the belief and the reliance and the hope in Elohim. So he had to come bring it. These people like this here, right? What did the, what did the apostles ask after Yahushua's resurrection? What did he ask? What did they ask him? You know what they asked? Him? After Yahushua's resurrection in the book of Acts, what did his apostles ask him? Will you return the kingdom back to Yahshua? They didn't even sit back and look at it. The same thing that our people are looking at now is they want an actual freedom from captivity, not realizing that they had been freed from death. Children, children. What's another place Yahusha freed captive? Lady with the issue of blood. So then we look at the next thing, right? And then he said he opened the prison to them that are bound. Let's look at bound. Because we dealt with captive. Oh, yeah, the opening of the prison. I sent you that word earlier, man. Because uh, there's a lot of characters in that one. Oh, you sure did? You want to do that now? Yeah, we got to do that now. The word for opening of the prison. I need everybody's attention right this here. So everybody need to focus on it. One. Maybe two. This word is pot ok ko -ok. When it's talking about the opening of the prison, the word is pa'ak, ko'ak. It's a lot of characters contained in that. Oh, the pronunciation. Mm hmm. It's pe'ak, ko'ak. Y'all should remember because we didn't talk about ko'ak before. It means the opening of the eyes, but it also means figuratively salvation from sin. He gonna put that word to the side and just drop that in with their demeanors. It's a long word. No. <laughs> Abigail. So now when we're dealing with the opening of the prison. So I want to deal with good things too, but I'm not going to be able to fit all that in this afternoon. This is the word P-A-K-A, co -ok. And what characters do y'all see for this? Oh my God, my finger kind of cut. I sliced them yesterday. Decent. What characters do y'all see right here? We got the pay, and what else we got behind it? What else we got here? What we got right here? And what we got here? No. The car. What we got? Oh, uh, cool. Yeah, the divide or the horizon. And what we got right here? And then the cot again. So if we have pay, what are we gonna use for pay? Clearly, we don't have very many options. Because if you remember right, this is literally, figuratively dealing with freeing you from salvation. But the word itself means to opening the eyes. We're going to go with opening for this. We're going to go with opening. So then if we got the coof. Light, and I, I would I would go with, I, I definitely agree with that. Light is the proper thing to use there. And then we got the cot, so we know we're going to separate. Then we got the coof again. So you have light, circle, time, behind, back of the head, final, lease, condensed, sun at the horizon. So we have the opening of the light separates. So what will we use for proof on that again? I can I, I can accept fine. Then we got the ooh, so you know we're gonna have a sacrifice. 
and then we got the cot which separates. So we got the opening of the light separates for a final sacrifice that separates. Now I want y'all to come over here to what it is, Acts 22. Remember the word means to open the eyes. Opening of the eyes. Also means wide. And also means figuratively for salvation or the opening of the prison. Acts chapter 22. Where do I want to begin at? Acts 22 and the poly about verse 6. Y'all done had that boy in the sun? That boy tan. Little Eugene. Daddy ain't glad nigga, no. Yeah, but I mean, he was a little yellow. I mean, he might have toned down a little bit. Oh, that boy, that boy, that boy tan. He been hanging out in the sun. Acts 22 and 6. Come on, man. It's, it's going to be 5 o'clock. It said, It came to pass that as I made my journey and was come not to the masses about noon, suddenly there shone from Shamahim a great light round about me. And I fell into the ground and heard a voice saying unto me, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And I answered, Who art thou, master? And he said unto me, I am Yahushua of Nazareth, whom thou persecutest. And they that were with me saw indeed the light and were afraid and they heard not the voice. So you got the light. So now we got that coof coming in right now because he's seen the light. Come on. And I said, what shall I do, master? And the master said unto me, arise and go into Damascus and there it shall be told thee of all things which are appointed for thee to do. Yep. And then I could not see for the esteem of that light being led by the hand of them that were with me. And I came into Damascus. And one Aeneas, or Ananias, a devout man according to the law, having a good report of all the Yahudim which dwelt there. He came unto me and stood and said unto me, Brother Saul, receive thy sight. So now we got the sight. Now his eyes have been what? Opened. And the same hour I looked upon him, and he said, The, the Elohim of our fathers have chosen thee, that thou shouldest know his will, and see that just one, and should have hear the voice of his mouth. So now if he's to be able to hear his voice of his mouth and he's been chosen, now he's been separated. Go ahead. It says, For thou shalt be his witness unto all men of what thou hast seen and had heard. And now, why tearest thou, arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins. What is baptism pointing to? The death and the resurrection. So now that we have that ooh with that sacrifice, he told him, "Go ahead, because this is the last time you ever gonna have to sacrifice yourself, and it's gonna cause you to be separated." Now you know in the Book of Psalms, he told you to open your eyes so you could do what? One of the things out of your Torah. Remember when we looked at back? I just mentioned John chapter nine with the blind man who eyes he opened, right? And he opened this man's eyes and he said, do you believe on the son of Elohim? He said, show me that man and I will. He said, you hear him and now you see him. Because he opened his eyes to be able to see that, to free him from that prison. Or that prison of darkness or that prison of death. This is another reason why Yahushua went to preach to the Ruachs in prison that we've discussed before with this particular passage. So we see it and we've actually went and looked at what Yahushua did. What? Opening the eyes of the blind. Or not opening the eyes of the blind, but being anointed to do what? To pre we didn't just focus on preaching good tidings to the meek. But you know, the meek is the humble. All the people who followed after him are the ones who were the ones who were supposed to hear it. See, another thing I meant to was about him separating too. I mean, we didn't get it. John, I mean, Matthew 10 and 30. We definitely didn't get it. We can get it right now though. So I told you last night what I told a brother yesterday. This man sacrificed his life for you. What will you be willing to sacrifice for him? See, all, see, I know somebody who's going to hell in this carnal just by one simple statement out of their mouth when they always telling me what they can't do in Mashiach versus what they can't. That's how I know you're going to hell. Because don't nobody in Mashiach talk about what they can't do. They always talk about what they can do in him. See, that might sound a little harsh, but that's the reality of the situation. 2 Corinthians 3 say, wherever the Ruach of the Master or Yahuwah is, there is freedom. You know what I'm saying? You got freedom in Mashiach. Anybody who's in Mashiach can never say, oh man, I got to do this. I can't do this. Spiritual people don't talk like that. A person with the mind of Elohim don't talk like that, much less think like that. 
When you run across somebody talking about, oh, we can't do this, we can't do that, I got to do this, I got to do that, they carnal. And reason why I say that, because a spiritual mind is life and shalom, a carnal mind is death. That's why I say you can know that person on their way, because they carnally minded. Nobody spiritual thinks that way. Yahoo Shah didn't come down here and say, oh, daddy, man, I can't do this. Why well, I got to do this? He didn't think like that. He said, your Torah was within my heart. I delight to do thy will, O Elohim. I take great pleasure and joy in accomplishing what is pleasing to you, not as what's pleasing to me. Don't Paul write that you got freedom in Mashiach? And do not take your freedom as an opportunity for an occasion of the flesh. So somebody who's free is never walking around, man, I can't do this and I can't do that. They don't think that way. They don't look at it as I'm being prohibited or hindered from fulfilling my will or my desires. That is somebody who's going to hell because they have a carnal mind. It's not because of them, it's their mind. Go ahead. Matthew 10 and 30. They say, but the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear ye not, therefore ye um, are more valued than many sparrows. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my father which is in Shamahim. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my father which is in Shamahim. Mm -hmm. Think not that I have come to send peace on earth, but I I have come to send peace but a sword. To separate. To what? separate. That's the first thing. He, how can he be the Prince of Peace? And he say he coming to bring a sword. Stupid nigga, his father came and brought one too. Did he not stand up and say who's on y'all side and told all the men to gird they sword? And did he come to bring peace that day or did he come to bring a sword? I don't know what these niggas be talking about. I just heard niggas debating last night. Well, not last night. I listened to some about 30 minutes more. I couldn't take no more. You know what I'm saying? Dude talking about who got the gospel, the Nazarene or the Christian. It was the most the, the, just deplorable thing I ever heard. You know what I'm saying? The Nazarene dude, he 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 tore a base. This nigga called him. This man said that Ezekiel 37 was about the building of a nation. And that the word for good tidings that we look at, Bashar see it means meat. See when you take this and take that, and then all the Christian dude kept doing was quoting Paul. And the thing that did trip me out is why quote a place from somebody who don't believe what you believe in. If you were debating this person and you wanted to crash and destroy his thesis, just like a brother put out put this out here the other day, right? Which everybody in this room knows. The apostles did not have a New Testament. Yahusha didn't have a New Testament. So everything that they preached and believed was based off the old. That's why we spend so much time looking at the old. So when you come back to the new, you'd be like, oh man, it was right there the whole time. You know what I'm saying? It's right there the whole time. Then it makes the new much easier to understand. See, now in time past, we done balanced it out. And in the time past, we done went straight out the New Testament alone and just grabbed stuff out of the old and say, see, this is why this happened. This is why you believe this. This is why you believe that. But when we live, we focusing on the law and certain things contained in that, then we got to spend more time on that side. So when you come back on the other side, then you'll be like, oh man, that was, that was very simple. It's very simple. Like if I'm debating somebody who don't believe in the New Testament, I'm not going to use the New Testament in my debate against this person. Because they don't believe it anyway. So that's not wisdom. Like this here, right? How many of y'all right now feel like you understand the New Testament at a strong level? There's no number, just so you feel like you understand it strongly. I'm past, I thought like everybody should be past that point where a nigga can come and bring something to New Testament and you be like, and he try to sway you from keeping the commandments. But that's what them niggas really be doing. That's all they be doing. That's all they be doing. I put it to this way. A Christian is going to come in and try to tell you you evil for keeping the commandments and you trying to earn your way to salvation. A Hebrew will tell you you a Christian because you talking about you believe. Where the law's at, brother. I don't know why people can't understand that there's a space for both. I don't understand it. It's like people act like they can't understand you can do both. And that faith is greater than the law. It's not that hard to understand. 
I put it to you this way, right? And it's just in the sense of the word. It's really a question only a man can answer, really. Would, would you want your woman just to obey you but have no trust and hope in you? Or to have hope and trust in you but don't obey you? That's a trick question. No, I say only a question that a man can ask. Oh. No, like, because this is how people look at it as a man. Would you want your woman, she obeys what you tell her, you tell her to do, but she doesn't believe nor trust in you. Or would you want a woman who believes and trusts in you, but don't do nothing you say? But she can't believe and trust you, she don't do what you say. That's my point exactly. <laughs> But That's guess what? No, it's not a trick question. But I, I, all I, I put it in regular terms. But this is how people, this is how people approach the word. Though people, a brew will come at you and say, it don't matter if you believe and trust in this person. You just gotta obey. A Christian will tell you, believe and trust in this person. You ain't got to obey them laws. That's how they come. So you gotta put it in the terms of, would you want a woman who you were with who behaved that way? But it's not the same because the niggas who saying who keeping it and don't have faith is not keeping it for real. I mean, I'm not even talking about whether they're keeping it for real or not. Just the premise. Just the premise. Because this is the premise. Because the Christians really believe that they believe. That's why they don't have But no, I'll be honest with you. They know they don't believe. Just because they are strong and they telling you that they believe. If you sit the people down, they don't really believe it. They don't believe it. Then they don't believe it. I'm, the reason why I say they don't believe it, I'm doing it because this is what everyone has told me that I ought to do. I really don't know nothing what this book is talking about. But I'm saying that's what separates the, to me, that's what separates the, the in house Christian and the out house Christian. It ain't no in house, out house. Don't none of them know what's going on. No, I'm saying like the thing who. The, 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 the so called saints in the church. I ain't talking about, I'm talking about the ones who. Really? Yeah, really? I mean, but you say really, but see, when you talk about trying to keep it, it's a lot of them. I'm talking about regardless of what side of the aisle that they're on. They really don't believe nothing that's in this book. You know what I'm saying? Because we're talking about trust and hope. That you rely completely on him and this and that. And we know 98% of Christians don't believe that rely on this man. Just like we know 99% of Bruce don't believe it either. When you got grown men, like I told you, like I said, right? When you had grown men have to be checked by women, by nigga man up, and keep the Sabbath, nigga, and tell them people you can't come to work, you already know you're in a bad state. Because it was the women, t it was a woman told these dudes, stop being cowards and strengthen yourself. That's strong words, cuz. It wasn't nothing but men on there coming up with reasons why you should be able to go to work on the Sabbath. And it wasn't nothing but women on there saying, no. Nah. No. Nah. And a nigga and a man had another say, he's holier than thou bruised. Niggas, is, niggas don't really believe. Because guess what? If you believe in y'all, you'll tell them, cry, hey man, look here, cuz. I can't do that. Well, you're going to be fired. What's wrong with your fire right then? Because you're going to have to make that happen. You know what I'm saying? Because the reason why you feel this way, because you know what you're going to remember? Exodus 20 for me, sir. Exodus 20 and 4. Then what you're going to remember, if you believe, this what you're going to remember. So, it is what it is. This is what they see. We in captivity. We at these people mercy. We ain't got no option. That's coward talk. That's past wicked nigga talk. That's coward talk. Only a coward say he ain't got no option. Even when we was in the street and we felt like, oh, we had niggas say they ain't got no options, but in reality, when we said we talking about our options were limited. You know what I'm saying? So we looked at all our options and say this is the best option. We knew we had options, but for our situation and scenario, we felt like this was the best option. We knew we had a choice not to sell dope, but we felt like we don't sell dope, we may not survive. But you still had a choice. Ain't nobody put no gun in no. So you scared that a man can fire you. Doesn't does does, does the thing that Solomon prayed for that, that he would have compassion on us in front of the people who took us captive? So if you niggas say you done repented and you done returned and kept the law, but yet you scared to tell this man you can't work on your God's day. You don't believe. But you telling me to keep the law in a man who you don't even believe in. See, that's my example of you obeying, so you say. But you don't believe or trust and hope in this person. 
Yeah, and sometimes, and I said that, and sometimes you ain't even being tested. Sometimes you niggas just want, you want the work anyway. You want the work anyway. But I'm going to be honest with you. A lot of these old super cone brood niggas, these niggas scared of Mr. Charlie. Man, we got to get out there. It's lawful to do good on the Shabbat. It ain't doing the same old capped out rescue. It ain't good to take care of your family. Nigga, you got six days to take care of your family, nigga. Six days, cuz. But you know, we're doing the Lord's work on the day. we doing the Lord's work. I gotta make sure they still. Exodus 20, man. Exodus 20 and 4. It said, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image of any likeness or anything that is in Shamahim above or that is in the rock beneath or that is in the water under the rock. Hey, hey, hey. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, Yahuwah, the Elohim, am a jealous Elohim, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generation. What do you say after that, though? Of them that hate me, and show mercy unto thousands Showing that what? love me, and keep my commandments. So he say he showed mercy. So you mean to tell me that if you kept his command, you guarded his word, he wouldn't show mercy on you? That's what he said he would do? So when a nigga say we ain't got no option and we in captivity, you don't believe that. And get regardless if you know it or not, that's good news. I show mercy to those that love me. If you know that he bound them out of prison and opened their eyes wide to bring them up out of Egypt, what, what, why do you think he can't free you from any situation? Much less freeing you from sin and death. People don't really believe. Come on back to Isaiah 61 and 1. Or 61 and 2. It says to proclaim the acceptable year of Yahuwah and the day of vengeance of our Elohim to comfort all that mourn. So when did Yahushua declare the vengeance of the day of Elohim? When did he declare it? We, we read about it a little bit last night in Deuteronomy 33. And I have to come back and grab that out of Deuteronomy 33 before we slide out of here. And I have to make it a quick and bridge version of that. When did Yahushua declare the day of Yahuwah and the vengeance for the for uh, of Elohim to comfort those who were mourning? No, he did it before he died. I can tell you that much. Now, in that in that Deuteronomy thirty three that we read last night in verse twenty, where it talk about Gad, y'all knew though what Gad means, right? Judge. Means truth. Damn means judge. He said that he enlarged Gad. He dwells as a lion and he tears the arm with the crown of the head. Now we dealt with the death part in that, but the second part of that verse was, he came with the heads of the people and executed the justice of Yahuwah in his judgments with Yasharal. So now we're talking about clearly somebody executing vengeance, correct? So when did Yahusha proclaim that he would come and execute vengeance? He stated he would come back in Matthew 24. He didn't talk about executing vengeance, though. I actually referenced this place already today. Very well. Luke 18 and 1. Luke 18 and 1. Henry. 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 Abigail, why are you and he spoke a parable unto them to this end that men ought to always ought always to pray and not to faint. Mm -hmm. Saying there is a city, a judge would fear not out of he neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him saying, Avenge me of my adversary. Who is this widow? Yashara. Who is the adversary? Who? Who? No, the nations. Because what are we going to correlate this to about bringing good news? If he told you to pray and not to faint, we already read it. Was not Yasharal praying to Yahuwah when they were where? In Egypt? Did he not come through and avenge them of their adversary when they came to him complaining continually? Go ahead. It said he was not for a while, but afterwards he said within himself, Though I fear not Elohim nor regard man, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge He didn't for a while. How long were they in Egypt? 430 years. Go ahead. It says, troubles me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. 
and the master said, Hear what the unjust judge said. And shall not Elohim avenge his own elect? Shall not Elohim avenge who? His own elect, which cried day and night unto him. Did we not cry day and night unto him? Remember, right? This is also a part of the good news to proclaim the day of Yahuwah in the vengeance. Go ahead. He said, He said, which cried day and night unto him, though he here bear along with them. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man coming, shall he find faith on the earth? Give me Psalms 99. He said, he said I'm going to kill these people, but will I find faith on the earth when I get here? See, we didn't talk about that before. You ain't got to worry about it. They're going to catch theirs. But is this man going to find you in faith when he get back here though? Notice, that he, notice he didn't say, will I find law keeping on the earth? Faith on the earth. That means that publishing of Shalom that I did with the men that I sent, did you destroy the authority attached to sin? Because I already did it. Remember, we read that Nahum, he cut the wicked off. I done did it. So why you ain't cut the wicked off? In your own heart. You don't know talk about, I published salvation. I told you that your Elohim reigned. So what's the problem? That's what he says he gonna look is he gonna find that on the earth. Not you right here talking about I keep the Sabbath, I own no pork on my fork. That man don't want to hear that crap. Why we know he don't want to hear that? Because he said what? It's many of them gonna come to me in that day and say, We did many good works in your name, Master. We cast out devil, and he said, Depart from me, you work of iniquity, I never knew you. Oh, that's ugly right there. That is a sour deal. Cause guess what? We already know what it but the other thing too, what we looked at with that word, uh prison being outflowing that I didn't reference. What did Yahusha say about an outflowing? Nobody. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. What would cause your belly to have living water to flow out of it? Nobody. Nah, he that believe on me as the scripture have said. So it was faith. When he said he proclaimed liberty or freedom or the, or the outpouring or the outflowing or the continuing of life it was faith that produced that what allowed Abraham to be able to produce life the way we can stand here and say we Abraham seed meaning we Mashiach seed faith that's what brought Isaac he had to believe that if Abraham didn't believe that Sarah wouldn't have no baby because y'all did like he said screw that nigga and find me somebody else but before y'all even chose Abraham he already knew Abraham was going to believe it Go ahead. This is why you before you go. That's why a lot of people who in the word don't progress or or receive the things because y'all already know you don't believe. What did Mashiach say in John six? There's some of you that believe not, for he knew already who believed and who did. He already know who don't. Go ahead. Psalm ninety nine. Psalm ninety nine and one. It says, "You who are reigning." Let the people tremble. He sitteth between the cherubims. Let the earth be moved. I'm glad you said that's a, that's another thing too, right? I have no problem with people proclaiming the name of Yahuwah this, that, then the third. But you know what really is supposed to happen when you hear the name of Yahuwah? What think? What y'all think according to this word, or even according to your own personal opinion or thoughts? What do you think should happen when you hear the name of Yahuwah? You should fear. You should tremble at the hearing of His name. You know what I'm saying? See, it's a lot of people, they say Yahuwah this, Yahuwah that, and will go commit a sin in a heartbeat. Hear the name of Yahuwah, you don't know the true name, brother, but do you tremble at the hint? See, the, th the thought of that it is, right? Your parents call you, you call one of these kids, they know they wrong, they already go to crying and shaking and trembling because they feel like wrath is about to come upon their head. You're supposed to fear at the hearing of his name. See, see, no, that's, I think that's uh, they didn't even name it something. Really. I'm not sure, so don't quote me. That's in Jeremiah. That's in Jeremiah chapter four or five to be specific. When he called to seize the roars and they don't pass over the line, shall you not fear him? Yeah, that's Jeremiah. So let me tell you something, right? Some people be like, why would a God want him to fear him? It's about respect. You're not loving him and serving him out of the fear, but you definitely have a healthy respect for him. I don't even understand how grown people say that when they want their kids to have that healthy respect. You're going to respect me. 
Because you don't respect me, I guarantee you I'm going to separate your soul from your body. Go ahead. They said, Jehovah is great in Zion, and he is high above all the people. Let them praise thy great and terrible name, for it is Kadash. Mm -hmm. The king's strength also loves his judgment. Thou dost establish equity and execute his judgment and righteous, righteousness in your code. Exalt ye who are Elohim and worship at the, his footstool, for he is Kadash. Moses and Aaron among his priests. And Samuel among them that call upon his name, they mm. called upon Yahuwah, and he answered them. Mm -hmm. He spake unto them in the cloudy pillar. They kept the testimonies and the ordinances he gave them. Go ahead. Thou answered them, O Yahuwah, our Elohim. Thou was uh, Elohim and forgave, forgavest them, though thou tookest vengeance on their inventions. Exalt Yahuwah, our Elohim, and worship at his kadashil, for Yahuwah, our Elohim, is kadashil. Mm -hmm. Now he just told you how he'll come and execute judgment, right? So how is he going to execute? Because he said he he's going to establish equity and justice in that judgment. What did Yahushua tell you he would do when he come to judge? How Or how he would come to reward? He said he would reward every man according to his what? His works. Remember how it says that in, in, in Ezekiel 18, the way of Yahuwah is not equal. He said, no, your ways are not equal. Say, knowing the terror of the master, we persuade men. Because you're going to be rewarded for what you did in this body, whether it be good or bad. And he's coming to execute this judgment upon all. We'll go to Epistle of Jude, verse 13, and we'll just stop right there. It says, raging waves of the sea forming out of their own shame. Wandering stars to whom which reserved the blackness of darkness forever. And Enoch also the seventh from Adam prophesied to thee, saying, Behold, you who are coming, for the master cometh with ten thousand of his Kaddishim to execute judgment upon all. And see, they go that execute the judgment we see in the Deuteronomy. Go ahead. And to con convince all that are ungodly among them. So, why, what, why would he need to convince all the ungodly? Why y'all think he would need to convince them? What would he be convincing them of? No, he executing wrath at this point. That he is the living Ali. Guess what? Was Pharaoh convinced? He said, who is Yahuwah? When he dropped them plagues on him, was Pharaoh convinced? Not till he killed that fur going and drowned all them niggas in the sea. Then they were thoroughly convinced then. See, ain't nothing to persuade you to once he get back here. Now I'm going to convince you and you're going to know for sure I was not one to be played with. I mean, when I told you the other day, right? Last night. Well, niggas don't... Huh? This word said to convict fully to punish. Because I already know. Convict fully to punish. I already know what that is just by uh, context of the sentence. Oh, you thought it was a game. But he said in Greek it means to convict fully or punish. Shafat, I'm vindicate. I'm judging. I told you last night. Niggas don't think this man coming back. Straight up and down. People don't believe this man's coming back. So they feel that's why a lot of brews feel like they got to build this up and we got to build a nation, build a community. They don't think he's coming back. It's the same thing that we read in Luke. Though he bear long with us, I will avenge you speedily. So they, they don't think he's coming back. That's why they ridicule and mock you if you say you're going to wait on Yahuwah because they don't think he's coming back. They feel like you a fool for waiting. He ain't did nothing yet. Go ahead. It says he will convince all that are ungodly among them and all the ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed mm -hmm. and all of their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lusts. And their mouth speaketh great swelling words, having men's persons. And, 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 and advantage by admiration. Check it, right? I need something to Luke. What is it? Luke 12 and uh, 4. Whatever it say, uh, I'll find And then after that, Matthew 25, really. We end that good news with that. Luke chapter 12. I don't know what it is. I just want to. Luke chapter 12 and verse 29. 
And seek not ye what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, neither be ye of a doubt for mine, for all things do nations of the world seek after. And your father knoweth all that ye need of these things. But rather seek ye the kingdom of Elohim, and all things shall be added unto you. Fear not, the little fl fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. I think that would be good news that he would tell you that it's Yah's pleasure to give you his kingdom. Matthew chapter 25 and 30. See, and that's another aspect of it. I probably have to go ahead and just keep on going into this next week. When you're talking about the good, to, the good news. Because another part of the good news that he discussed was the kingdom itself. See, we looked at certain aspects of what he was bringing forth as good news. Because we could tie that back into Moses telling them the good news of them going into the land. And Yahushua came and did the same thing. Before we even go to talking about the good things of Elohim. Because he said, who, who, who spring good tidings of good. Go ahead. Matthew 25 and 30. They say, and cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. When the Son of Man shall come in his esteem and all the, and all the Kadash Malachim with him. Then shall he sit upon the throne of his esteem, and before him shall be gathered all nations, and shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divided his sheep from yeah. the goats. And yeah. he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. And what will he say to those on his right hand? Then shall the mother king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye the root of my father, and inherit the kingdom prepared for you Pause. for the foundation of the world. That's the same thing Moses told them about inheriting the land, wasn't it? And that's what we'll sit back, y'all willing, next week to talk about is uh, that right there. So hallelujah for y'all who shine the word. And we will stop right there.